Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to tonight's meeting. Um, may I also extend a warm welcome to members of the public who are watching our webcast. This meeting will be webcast and a, rec and a record retained on the Council website. For those at home viewing the webcast, I would like to inform you that if you look above the video, you will see a resources tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear in the right hand side. This will allow you to open the agenda in PDF form and follow the discussions and debate. The guillotine, understanding orders nine of the council procedures rules, I do intend to take a formal comfort break this evening. And I will propose a 10 minute adjournment at an appropriate point during the meeting and it will be between 7.30 and 8 p.m. Where, three hours, where three, how, three hours have elapsed after the commencement of the meeting, I shall interrupt the meeting and a member speaking must immediately cease speaking and sit down. The meeting shall then dispose of the item then under consideration as if the motion that the question be now put has been carried. Next item on the agenda, declaration. Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I could just as the Chief Whip for the Conservative Party, um, we were hoping to have a suspension of the guillotine until the first three notices of motion have been fully heard. Thank you. Have you got a second? I'll that? second that, Mr. Mayor. Can you take a vote on that? Take a vote. That's okay. We take a vote on that, please. All those in favour of the recommendation put forward by Andrew Hodson, please show your hands. All those against? The result of that ballot was uh, 24 for 37 against. 30, 35 against, sorry. 27, 35. 27, 35. So the kill team will be enacted at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Um, members are asked to consider whether they have any uh, disclosable pecuniary and any other relevant interest in connection with the matters to be determined at this meeting, and if so, to declare it and state the nature of such interest. Are there any, please? No? Okay. The next uh, item then is the Mayor's announcements. I'll do the, the, the proper ones here first. I've been notified of the following apologies, Councillor Andy Corkill, Councillor Jenny Johnson, Councillor Harry Gorman and Councillor Sharon Jones. Are there any further apologies? Mr. Mayor, Cherry Povell's put her apologies in as well. Who's? Cherry Povell. Councillor Cherry Povell. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Councillor Tony Cossio's put his in. Councillor Tony Cossio's put his in. Councillor Tony Cossio.
Okay. There's one thing I'd just like to add. Um, it, it, it's a bit of a plea, I suppose, in some ways. But being the Mayor of Wirral is a lovely honour uh, and everything else. I just wanted to make the point that I'm having a Mayor's Ball on the 15th of October uh, at Thornton Hall. And, of course, all members, I'd love to see all members come. But, if, if you know, if you love a ticket, um, please get in touch with either myself or Sue Carroll. Uh, and we're trying to get it boxed off now. So I just wanted to make that point. Um, finally, to assist councillors this evening, a supplementary agenda pack has been published, and I would ask councillors to refer to that pack during consideration of any amendments to motions to be discussed. Okay. Then I'll move on to... Uh, item three, which is the minutes. Turning to item three, we are asked to approve the minutes of the council meetings held on the 19th and the 26th of May and the extraordinary meeting held on the 11th of August 2021. I will approve these minutes as a correct record. Do I have a seconder? So seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jeanette. Can we agree that by assent, please? All in agreement. Thank you. Next item then is uh, public and members' questions. Public questions, no 30 minutes time limit. Um, members, I can report that no public questions have been submitted this evening. B1, statements. Members, no requests from members of the public to make a statement have been received. And B, so two petitions. I have received notice of two petitions to be presented to Council in accordance with Standing Order 11.2. Once the petitions have been presented, I will refer the matter to another appropriate body of the Council once the petitions have been presented in line with Standing Order 11.2. A person presenting a position may speak for up to one minute. I would like to invite Mr Phil Spencer to present his position to Council. Good evening, Mr Mayor, and good evening, Councillors. I'd like to present uh, two petitions uh, gathered by Bromley Village Community Association. Uh, one contains over 2,000 signatures from online petitioners, and the other has over 5,000 signatures from shoppers and residents collected in the village itself. Both petitions call for the Bromley's main car park to remain a free car park uh, in order to sustain the village's economic and social well-being. Uh, I won't attempt to tell you our arguments uh, for such a call. I'm guessing most of you already know them. They've hardly changed in the four years we've been bringing them before you. And you've agreed each time that we have a case. Yet the decision lies now against us. COVID has taken some blame for both our situations, I feel. The council for its budget de deficit, we for our struggling retail and service businesses. Whereas it could be argued that you have alternatives to solve your budgetary problems, we only have you to help us uh, through these difficult times. As a community, we need your help right now, not punitive measures. Please don't allow an ill-considered decision today to become a regeneration problem tomorrow. Please help us. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and um, Mr Spencer, thank you. And can I now ask uh, Councillor Mary Jordan to present her petition to Council? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a petition here of 692 signatures collected by the traders from Bebbington Village, also opposing the imposition of car parking charges at Bebbington Civic Centre, they're concerned for their fragile businesses, which are only just about recovering from COVID. They're currently trading at about 60% of pre-COVID activity. And 
employees there report to me that they will be charged, if they charge five pound a day, then they're talking about 20 pound a week for a beautician. That's an awful lot of money for someone out of their small wage. Thank you. I can turn this light on red when the, when the time's up. Thank you. Do that, please. Thank you very much indeed, Mary. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Spencer and Councillor Jordan for their petitions, and I will refer these to the Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee. Are there any further petitions? No? Okay, we move on. Uh, next item is members' questions. I've received three questions from members in advance of the meeting. Firstly, I would like to invite Councillor Phil Gilchrist to put his question to Councillor Liz Gray, Chair of the Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this question is as follows. The combined effect of sweeping every three months, the timing of weed treatment and the build-up of dirt and grit has led to poor conditions on and around traffic islands and curbsides in various parts of Wirral. Can the Chair bring together the various officers and contractors involved to tackle this in a concerted way to remove these unsightly scenes that give such a poor impression of Wirral? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Secondly, I would like to ask uh, Councillor Stuart Kelly to put his question to Councillor Jeanette Williamson, Leader of the Council. Stuart. Might, might it be convenient if, if the previous question were answered before we move, we move on? I'll move. That's fine. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to thank Councillor Gilchrist for raising such an important issue. I am more than happy to ask officers to consider this matter and respond as soon as possible. And in fact, I hope that my committee can convene a working group to discuss these and related matters. So your question is most welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe we may be entitled to a supplementary. Um, Mr Mayor, can the Chair say just how soon this work can start, the meeting of a working party, but the work itself to try and get Wirral out of this mess that we appear to be in? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. It's my hope that it will be as soon as everybody is available. So it's my hope that it will be very, very soon, perhaps in the next week or two, that we can start as councillors to discuss that as a working group. And in terms of when the operations can happen, that, that's an operational um, matter for officers to answer. But in terms of councillors, we would meet as soon as the team are ready, as soon as the, the councillors involved can get together. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr Mayor. And now, secondly, I would like to ask Councillor Stuart Kelly to put his question to Councillor Jeanette Williamson, Leader of the Council. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll, I'll stand so I can best see you from the back row as it were, and indeed the leader. Um, Mr. Mayor, the, the leader will have watched uh, events in Afghanistan uh, with the same horror that the vast majority of people in Britain and Wirral have, and I commend her swift response to that deteriorating situation, particularly towards those Afghans to whom the British Army owes a debt of honour because of the work and support they have given to the British Army, which has now made them a target of the Taliban. Can she confirm that the Afghans who will be settling in Wirral under the Afghan Relocations and Assistance Policy are in fact classed as ex-service personnel and are covered by the United Kingdom Armed Forces Covenant and our own local Armed Forces Community Covenant? Jeanette, please. Okay, so thank you for that question, Councillor Kelly, and yes. Like everyone in this room, I've been watching the unfolding horror that is Afghanistan. Um, so thank you for those kind words. The UK has been running a scheme to support locally employed staff in Afghanistan, often in dangerous and challenging situations, in recognition of their commitment and bravery shown supporting UK forces since 2013. 
The Afghan Relocations and Assistance Policy, which launched in April 2021, reflected the changing situation in Afghanistan and the consequent risk to locally employed staff. This scheme is intended to support current and former locally employed staff who have worked with the UK British forces and government in any capacity to provide appropriate support that properly reflects their work and the risks involved. This is the programme that Wirral has committed to support through the placement of Afghans in Wirral. Those individuals coming through the ARUP process are classed as civilians who are employed by the British military and or in any UK government department in any capacity. The Regional Strategic Migration Partnership has confirmed that these specific individuals would not fall under the United Kingdom Armed Forces Covenant and subsequently our own local armed forces community covenant which is targeted to support military personnel and their family past and present. I hope that helps. Thanks for that Mr Mayor. If I, if I may just follow up with a, um, a supplementary because the issue is obviously wider uh, than those um, who have assisted the British Army. Um, the leader will know that Afghanistan is no longer a safe place for many people, especially women, teachers, scientists, etc., and those who have stood against a fundamentalist ideology. Can she just assure members and, and the will uh, in general that we will continue to be a welcoming place for people escaping this and any tyranny? Thanks, Councillor Kelly. Absolutely, I, I completely share your sentiments, particularly around girls and women, whose rights are going to be absolutely annihilated by the Taliban. And it's an absolutely heartbreaking situation. Of course, we, will, we are and we will remain a welcoming borough, certainly as long as I'm leader. And finally, I would like to invite Councillor Alan Brown, Alan Brain, to put his question to Councillor Jean Robinson, Chair of the Partnerships Committee. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Chair of the Partnerships Committee may well be aware that data from the House of Commons Library shows that 45% of Wirral's patients currently have to wait more than two days for a GP appointment, and that 42.5% are unable to make a face-to-face -face appointment. While it was understandable that these face-to-face -face appointments couldn't go ahead at the height of the pandemic, if she agrees that both surgeries and residents are now being let down by a government that is failing to grapple with rising waiting times and a backlog of people waiting for treatment, will the Chair now agree to make representations to the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, urging him to act urgently to train more GPs and other primary health care staff, to increase funding and to fully support our GP practices? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, of course, we fully support all our healthcare workers, not least to obviously pay them the right amount of money. Could I suggest, though, Councillor Brown, we are looking at the um, scrutinising for the ICS um, and obviously maybe inviting along, obviously, the uh, measure side, I think it's a consortium of GPs, along to one of our um, forthcoming meetings to discuss that further prior to writing to the, Secretary, the Health Secretary. However, what I'd like to suggest, if you don't mind, is that as a council we do write to the Health Secretary in support of our residents and GPs on a matter of slightly more urgency. The scrapping of free prescription charges for people over 60 and raising um, the qualifying age to 66 could have a devastating impact on the health of tens of thousands of older people. In a joint open letter urging the government to reconsider proposals to scrap free prescriptions for over 60s in England, 20 healthcare organisations expect deep and shared concern that the move would leave many patients unable to afford medication, intensifying existing health inequalities and having a devastating, devastating impact on some older people's health. Signatories of the letter, including Age UK, the Royal College of GPs, warn the proposals will be likely to have a lasting adverse effect on half of 60 to 64 year olds with more, one or more long term conditions hitting those who are poorly on are poorly and on low incomes the hardest. It has been warned some will be patients reluctant to act on symptoms or get a diagnosis for fear of being unable to afford long-term symptom relieving or in some cases life-saving medication. Introducing additional costs for over 60s, managing long-term health conditions would disproportionately affect a large group of patients. 
while low income but just above the threshold for financial help for the cost of their medication. Patients who are less financially well off would be discouraged from managing their health proactively and can mean that they only present, only present to their GP when their problems are far worse. It fails to take into account the impact on local health services. The money the government raises, if it goes ahead with this proposal, will be easily outweighed by the additional cost of the NHS. If, as it's Jean, predicted, could I just stop you there, please? Could yeah. you, could you specifically answer the question if you've got it, please? Um, I'm asking if Council Brain would prefer a right to health secretary on behalf of the council, over, which supports the GPs um, over the prescriptions as a matter of urgency, more so than whilst we scrutinise the partnership committee the impacts on the GPs, the present and on residents. So, that is my suggestion that we change the word and the letter and there's more being, obviously at this moment, this is more urgent for our residents and also for our healthcare professionals. Thank you. Um, th thank you, uh, thank you. Councillor Robinson. Um, uh, while I don't disagree that the issue you raise is, is very important, I think a lot of people on Wirral are very concerned that the fact they're finding is it just impossible to make an appointment to actually see their GP face to face. And I think that is also an issue that, that requires uh, a response from uh, this council. Can I reply, reply Mr. Mayor? Yes, but Sorry. Uh, that's why I suggest that Councillor Brain, obviously, initially my answer was obviously if we bring that through the scrutiny process prior to writing to the Health Secretary to ascertain why that is the case. Is it because of digital systems or to do a scrutiny on that and then write to the Health Secretary? But my suggestion was to write on this more urgent pressing matter because it's under consultation. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, there being no other questions, I'm now moved to item number five. Um, item five, matters requiring approval or consideration by the council. Um, item A, uh, Wirral Plan 2021 to 26. This is a referral from the Policies and Resources Committee held on the 28th of July, 2021. I call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call on Councillor Yvonne Nolan to second. So move, Mr. Mayor. So second, Mr. Mayor. Over to you, Jeanette, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This refresh plan is based on the plan previously agreed by full council in October 2019. The high-level priorities from that plan are still the right ones, but the plan has been refreshed and updated to reflect the radically changing context of the past 18 months. There is no doubt that COVID-19 is having a significant impact on rural residents and businesses, and will continue to do so for the coming months. It sharply exposed the existing unacceptable socio-economic and health inequalities in our borough. We know the unfair impact of the pandemic on those already disadvantaged groups and additional burden COVID-19 has placed on areas with already poor health outcomes. We know that a large proportion of universal credit recipients are also in work and have now had £80 a month taken from them. We know that there is a huge increase in both children's and adults' mental health issues and in some way that is the hidden pandemic. Wirral is as diverse as it is distinctive. It is a place of disparities. Some of the most affluent wards sit side by side with some of the most deprived wards, both nationally and on Wirral. The inequalities in, the life in life expectancy at birth sees both male and female residents continuing to compare poorly against the England average, with a large gap in life expectancy between wards in the east and west of Wirral. This gap widened for both men and women between 2015 to 17 and 2016 to 18, from 9.3 to 10.7 years for women and 9.8 to 12.1 years for men, reflecting the large inequalities in the borough. In further trying to understand the challenges of our borough's inequalities, the 2019 indices of deprivation saw we're all ranked the 77th most deprived authority of 317 authorities in England. The report found that just over 35% of the rural population, 
That's around 115,000 people. Live in areas classified as being in the most deprived 20% of areas in England, with over 83,000 of those residents living in the 10% most deprived. There's been a 16.6 increase in pupils eligible for free school meals from 10,848 in January 2020 to 12,652 in January 2021. People living in lower income households were more likely to have requested but not received mental health treatment. Over half of all social care users report having anxiety and depression in Wirral. For all of those above reasons, the Wirral Plan will put tackling inequalities at its core. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to do things differently and to make a fairer, more inclusive borough. The plan sets out how we will build a fairer, more prosperous Wirral where local people can get good jobs and achieve their aspirations. Community wealth building is a key part of how we will achieve this and will help improve the economic, social and health chances for our residents. As well as the vision, the plan, underpinned by a set of the plan is underpinned by a set of draft delivery plans which will set out how we achieve this vision. It is based on five priorities with some specific deliverables that we will focus on. And they are a thriving and inclusive economy, a clean, and clean energy sustainable borough, brighter futures for all, all regardless of their background, safe and pleasant communities our residents are proud of, and active and healthy lives for all, with the right care at the right time to enable residents to live longer and healthier lives. Mr Mayor, I'm proud that the Wirral, that Wirral Council has at the very heart of it the Wirral Plan and these values which underpin it. Working with our partners, we will strive to tackle the inequalities that are blighting people's lives, whether they be physical or mental health, social, economic or environmental. We will seek to rebuild our communities and businesses that have suffered at the hands of COVID, and we will ensure that it is no longer acceptable to have an individual's life chances determined by their postcode. I, I commend the Wirral Plan to you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Um, I am not aware of any amendments to this, so we move to the, to the debate. Uh, are there any speakers? Hello? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief because I'm pinning this comment on one of the clauses in the World Plan themes active and healthy lives for all with the right care at the right time to enable residents to live longer and healthier lives. Mr Mayor, that's one of the plan themes. I'm referring to that because of the exchange that do, just took place between Councillor Brahm and Councillor Robinson. As we're all residents hope for improvements in the health service and recovery of the health service and the recovery of all the work that it was doing before the pandemic, and will obviously support every effort to get the service back on track to cope with all the demands upon it. The point of Councillor Brame's question earlier was to see how we can work with the clinical commissioning group and our partners in the primary care networks in the first stage of primary care to bring that about because the issue that's being raised regularly and in the press nationally now is that the fact that if people can get, feel they can get appropriate appointments at their doctors, at the right time, then that is an important aspect of early identification of problems that might become more serious problems later. So I hope in working on this plan, we take that theme on board and work constructively with all our partners in all aspects of the health service. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd, I'd just like to put on record my thanks to um, everybody involved in compiling this, um, all the officers involved in compiling it, especially Carly Brown and Rosemary Boylan, for the open and collaborative way in which they approach this task, which is a huge task. Um, it's been very well done, and I commend this plan. Despite having an amendment for the draft delivery plan which follows this, the actual Wirral Plan 21-26 itself is an excellent piece of work and I really look forward to helping to deliver it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. 
No others? Right, so then we move to the seconder of the motion. Councillor Yvonne Nolan, you now have up to three minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am pleased to second this motion because this plan is, is vital. Okay. Thanks, thanks Jeanette. Um, it creates the base, it creates the reference point for everything else that happens in all our other committees. Everything can link back into the world plan and all of the committees can ensure that what they're delivering fits into the aims of this plan. Our safe and pleasant communities, sustainable environment, brighter futures, and active and healthy lives. We all know that these are the essential things that matter in order to thoroughly regenerate Wirral and to make it even more of a pleasant place for everybody to live. For many people in Wirral, it is already a wonderful and pleasant place to live, but not everybody. And that's not right. And that's not something that, as a council, we can oversee and we can allow to happen. Life isn't pleasant and comfortable for a significant number of our residents. And it's so unfair and completely unacceptable that we have differences in life expectancy of up to 12 years, depending on where you live. That is something that we cannot, that we cannot contemplate as a council and that we cannot continue to accept. I believe, Mr. Mayor, that we have the information and that we can put together, and it's certainly something that I want to do through our Health and Wellbeing Board that very much encompasses this plan, that I want to find out where do people lose that 12 years? Where does it go? What is it? Can we pinpoint it? Can we put it down to housing, to income, to diet, to lifestyle, to lack of employment, to lack of education? Where does the 12 years go? And can we find it? And can we do something about it? And can we challenge that? And that's what we need to know. And this plan will help us to do that. We have a health and well-being board that has a stated and agreed purpose that everyone in Wirral will live happy, safe and healthy lives. It fits perfectly into this plan. Just heard Councillor Robinson talk about the integrated care systems that are racing down the track to, um, to greet us by next April. And our Health and Wellbeing Board, working closely, I'll finish in a moment, Mr. Mayor, working closely with our partners across Wirral to ensure that what we deliver is truly integrated, is linked into this plan. We have agreement with our key partners that we will work to the Wirral plan and that we will deliver um, better, happy, safe and healthy lives for people in Wirral. I commend this plan to you, Mr. Mayor, and I am proud to second it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nolan. Right of reply, proposal of the motion, Councillor Williamson, you now have your right of reply and may address the Council for up to three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd just like to agree with Councillor Gilchrist about the importance of working with our health partners, and that will certainly be done through both the Health and Wellbeing Board and partnerships. The other, the other end of the process, as it were. And I completely agree about GP appointments. It is, you know, it, it's, it's a chronic situation at the minute. Um, perhaps you might see that £350 million that was on the side of the bus that was meant to be going to the health service at some point. Who knows? But I won't hold my breath. But thank you for your comments. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much indeed, Jess. Um, right, there being no further comments, we will move to the vote. Could all those in favour please show? Mr. Flowers. Any against? No. And that um, is a full house. 
Okay? Thank you very much indeed. Move to item B, which is the Whittle Plan 2021-26 Draft Delivery Plans. This report presents the Whittle Plan 21-26 Delivery Plans that have been developed during the summer with group leaders considering the draft plans on Friday the 20th of August 2021. The draft delivery plans are submitted to Council for approval. I therefore call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. I call on Councillor Yvonne Nolan to second the report. Pose so, of the motion, Councillor Jeanette. So moved, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much indeed. So second, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Over to you, Jeanette. Mr Mayor, at p and on the 28th of July, as well as recommending the main body of papers, the committee agreed that further engagement and discussion with relevant committees would take place to shape delivery plans. Officers were tasked by withdrawing up draft delivery plans to be worked up with committees. This work is ongoing and this officer's report seeks to provide a holistic oversight of those draft delivery plans to form an appendix to the Wirral Plan and to recommend the further engagement and discussion with the relevant committees to help shape those delivery plans. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Um, just for, could I just see Phil on this one, please? Right, um, so we are now in debate. Are there any speakers, please? Sorry. Oh, you want me to announce that? Sorry. Sorry. Just one second. For, your inter uh, for information, Mr. Mayor, we have been advised that Councillor Cleary and Councillor Gray may wish to move an amendment for this item. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Right. Do you want me to speak to that now? Do you want to speak to it, yeah. Phil? Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, members have been circulated um, some proposed changes to the delivery plan. These arise not out of the content specifically of the delivery plan, but the, the way the del delivery plan is um, put together. So we're suggesting some changes to that, which I will... I'll explain the reasons why, but all members have been circulated the actual wording of the changes that we want to see. So, Mr. Mayor, just referring firstly back to the, the plan itself, section 3.6 on page 34 outlines the broad priorities for the world plan. Uh, as usual, Mr. Mayor, the economy comes first with health, well-being and environment following on behind. So this thinking flows through to the draft delivery plan itself. The economy section is the first, longest and most detailed the environment section is thin and lacking in content. Many aspects of the plan that correspond naturally with the work of the Environment Committee uh, and the areas that it covers are absent from the environment section of the delivery plan. So this all reflects rather outdated thinking, which assumes that if we get the economy right, everything else will fall into place. This is back to front, Mr. Mayor, and increasingly out of step with a modern, comprehensive approach to the economy. Wirral's unique selling point is its quality of life, our amazing geography, coast, natural environment and heritage. This is why so many people want to live in and visit Wirral. So if we build on our USP and prioritise on making Wirral an even better place, then even more people will want to live in, visit and work in Wirral. The economic benefits will naturally flow. So Wirral Council is currently consulting on its economic strategy. The draft objectives of that draft strategy are threefold. Firstly, competitive business. Secondly, thriving place. And thirdly, people reaching their potential. So we need a broad definition of what competitive business really means. It must not be shorthand for low cost with an outdated view as to the importance of social and environmental factors. 
perhaps, Mr Mayor, a single objective of making Wirral an outstanding green place to live and work in would be more appropriate. So with, that, with all that in mind, Mr Mayor, um, what we are proposing in brief is to restructure the delivery plan to some degree. So to take item five in the inclusive economy section, which deals particularly with active travel, uh, and to move that into the environment section, to remove section two from safe and pleasant communities and move that into the environment section, and also to take the delivery of the new road safety action plan from section four in safe and pleasant communities and also add that to the uh, environment section. So that, Mr. Mayor, would redress the balance uh, in terms of the content of the environment section and we feel would give a better focus to the delivery of those specific items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Gray to formally second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I speak to it? Sorry. Yes, go on. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I said previously, um, the Wirral Plan 2126 itself is an excellent piece of work. It's these draft delivery plans that need to match the plan itself, and our amendment is designed to enable that and to put active travel and road safety back where they were um, and where members of the Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee voted to keep them. The Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee has been working hard on these issues and there is no good reason to remove them from that committee. I ask that members support this amendment which will enable Wirral to continue to develop into an environmentally sustainable place to invest and live. Thank you. You've heard the amendments um, that has been put forward by Councillor Cleary and seconded by Councillor Gray. Does anyone wish to speak on that? I thought someone's got Thank you, Mr. Board. Mayor. Yeah, this. I want, I have matched up the relevant changes and the relevant pages of the document and the plan and the various colours. It took some time to do it and I did succeed in doing so because I understand the concerns. I'm not sure those concerns were especially helped by some of the comments that Councillor Cleary made about the, the, uh, some aspects of the plan being thin and lacking in content and reflecting outdated thinking. We actually, I have, do believe, we have moved forward in the last 30 years and since residents watch the news every, pretty well every night about extreme temperatures in some parts of the world, flooding even in New York, and the effects of climate change and agriculture, then there can't be any citizens of Wirral who aren't aware of the continuing problems and the challenge that we all face. I think it is possible to make those changes to the document. After all, it brings in line things we've talked about for years, like pollinators, which I first brought to the attention of Council more than a decade ago. But to show how things have changed, when I used to cycle to council meetings in the town hall, there were members years ago who used to scoff, who used to say, on your bike, and what you're doing on a bike. That climate literally has changed by the work of people who worked with the former Active Travel Forum and Cycle Forum, like myself, for more than 20 years. So we are in a new era. So I'm content that we should try and bring road safety and sustainable transport into the places that are being suggested. I didn't agree with all that Councillor Cleary said about outdated thinking, because in fact that thinking has been going on for 40 years or so with economists like Mission, that people, M-I-S-H-A-N, which people often don't refer to nowadays, or indeed to some of the earlier arguments about limits to growth, or indeed about um, where there was a a gap in petrol production. So we are moving forward and these are some technical changes that bring things together in a better place which I will support and what the key to it all is that members follow the plans that we have and refer to them regularly and see if they're actually going into effect things like getting more uh, power charging points for motor vehicles bearing in mind that there needs to be electricity to do that at the right time in the right place. But we are moving forward. 
I welcome these suggestions and hope that members will bless them. Thank you. Tom. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just very, very briefly, in terms of, um, it's a bit, I quite agree with uh, Councillor Gilchrist's sentiments, actually. It's unfortunate some of the language that um, Councillor Cleary used in that. Um, you know, we are fully supportive of road safety, making a clean and green economy in Wirral. Um, the problem with this is it's just been it's circulated at the last minute. They are draft delivery plans that they haven't gone to um, been discussed fully at the committees yet. So I think this is um, too early to be moving this amendment and consequently I won't be supporting that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to pick up on what Councillor Gilchrist has been talking about then, um, so this is specifically an amendment for the delivery plan. However, um, something very similar was put forward uh, for the Constitution and Standards Committee to deliberate over just a couple of weeks ago, which was for uh, the Environment Committee to take over active uh, transport. And um, after much debate, uh, and m maybe Councillor Gilchrist can come back in and remind me of the wording of the resolution that we all agreed on cross-party. Um, but it was ultimately for the two committees to work together, but it would still reside under uh, economy regeneration and development initially. Um, the main reason being that whilst active transport, it could be argued that that comes into our lived environment after it is delivered. Um, beforehand, it is part of regeneration projects that would actually deliver it. Um, and I think this seems a little bit like trying to, because certain people didn't get the way that time, they're trying to do it through the back door instead. And I hope that's not the, uh, uh, the, the reason behind it. So uh, again, as uh, Councillor uh, Anderson has just suggested, it hasn't even gone back to committees uh, as a draft plan. Uh, it's not gone back to committee for debate as yet. And I think it's uh, putting the car before the horse, to be honest, uh, and it should be delayed. Thank you. Sorry. Councillor Williamson, you now have the right of reply and may address the council for up to three minutes. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am speaking to the amendments. Okay, so I don't actually have a problem with that and I'm supportive of it. I do believe that what councillors Gray and Cleary have outlined and their suggestions around transferal of specific matters going into different committees makes sense to me. Um, however, I do take issue also with some of the language from Councillor Cleary because I think you'll find that, particularly around our community wealth building and our inclusive economy, that's not outdated at all. And our progressive procurement, working with our anchor institutions, for me, I'm sure that you'll agree that regeneration must improve the lives of our residents or it doesn't really bring... Um, any tangible benefits for people on Wirral. That said, I am supportive of the amendments. Thank you. And with that, um, we take a vote on um, the amendment. So all those in favour of the amendment, please show. That was uh, 4, 42 against 18. That is carried. So we can now have a vote uh, with the substantial.
substantive motion. Um, Gary? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Invite the debate first before we get into votes. So, are there any people who would wish to debate? We're not, sorry, Alan. Yeah, I'd just like to say that this draft strategy document um, that was recommended and applauded by Councillor Gray, um, there is a lead committee. Um, in my particular case, it's Safe and Pleasant Communities. And we'll come on to look at the um, partnership and the governance structure around that. I'm not sure why there's such a struggle to work cross committee. Cross party, cross committee, cross working, it's all written in. Um, you have a lead committee and then you work with other committees collaboratively to try and make things work. I don't know why, even before we've got past the draft stage, there is already a move to try to reshape it. Um, try maybe working cross committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in answer to that point, can I just clarify that if it didn't matter, you wouldn't be objecting? Thank you. I didn't say it didn't matter. I've been misquoted there. I did not say it didn't matter. I've been completely misquoted. Okay. Thank you. Chris? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just to go back to the main uh, point uh, uh, that we've been, that's been brought up. Basically, um, we've got here an excellent plan. It's been very well thought through. Yes, there are going to be some teething troubles, but fundamentally, since I've been on the council since 2014, I think this is really a very well worked out, well thought through and positive plan. It's sensible, it's um, goal orientated, it's outcome focused, it's very intelligent plan. Yes, there are going to be a few teething troubles. Yes, there, are, there, I, there is the new thinking about um, you know, people being at the heart of regeneration. There, are, there is new thinking around development. But they are all things that we can work out through this draft process. It's a, it's a living uh, document, and uh, I'm, I'm completely relaxed with, with the uh, suggestion of the amendment. Thank you. Blimey, that was a stretch, wasn't it? Um, I, I, I've just got a question. I, I'm just wondering, what could somebody tell me what the, ben, the major benefit would be um, of this amendment, of moving it from one situation to another one? Please. I know it's past Mr Mayor, but I just wanted to see some clarification on what the benefit would be. I didn't get a chance, Mr Mayor. You were busy reading your documents. I did. Right. Yes, Pat. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just a few additional comments from me based on what we, we've heard previously. Uh, first of all, you know, I didn't say that the plan was thin and lacking in content, as Councillor Gilchrist said. I said that the environment section of the plan, as originally drafted, was thin and lacking in content, and the amendment now passed addresses that by moving substantial matters into the environment section. Uh, in terms of active travel, um, there's been a lot of frustration on the part of the Green Party in terms of the, the pace and delivery of active travel investment. Uh, the same applies to road safety. Uh, and, you know, road safety is on the agenda for the Environment Committee tomorrow. And I think it's fair to say that we have concerns about the, the way that road safety um, action is uh, proceeding uh, within this council. Uh, in terms of the economy, to clarify, uh, my concerns were the way the economy always comes first and is more detailed. And if you look at the the delivery plan, it's the first section. If you look even at the, the Venn diagram uh, that's presented, the economy is top of the circle. That was my point, that we need to think more holistically about these issues rather than always putting the economy first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the key lesson from the last few minutes, and I apologise for not hearing the first few words that Councillor Cleary said about it referring to the environment section, so I apologise to members for that. But I think the key issue 
for all of us is the last few years we've spent our time trying not to work in silos. So the key point is that when committee papers have references to environment, climate and other implications, we don't just regard it as an add-on along with all the other things at the end of the committee reports. There is always a temptation to, for committees to think, well, this is our bit, and this is our job, but I would merely make a plea to all members not just to study their own committee papers, but to look at key issues arising in all committee papers and follow them through, which is one of the things I said about the cool Wirral plan. It's a bit since I looked at it, I admit, but you know, following these things that's in there up regularly is something that behoves us all to do as we help to get out of the climate emergency that we're currently in and find ways to live together for the next 20 years without things declining further. Councillor Mike Collins. Thanks, Mr Mayor. It's just a plea to everybody. If you want to speak, can we speak into the mic because I was missing half of what's being said. Can we ask everybody to speak into the mic so we can actually hear what's being said, please? Uh, some of them we can hear, but other people can't hear a thing. Thank you. Mr Mayor, would it be helpful if the speakers that Councillor Collins didn't hear were to repeat what they said closer to the mic? Were there any specific speakers that Councillor Collins didn't hear he'd like to hear from now? Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, no, it's not, I'm just asking as a general plea. I wasn't being sarcastic. I was being, uh, trying to be helpful. As was I. Well, I don't think you are. Thank you. OK. No further questions. There being no further comments, we will move to the vote. All those... Second there of the motion. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, my notes are upside there. Um, second uh, of the motion, Councillor Nolan, you now have up to three minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, obviously, it's the okay, motion yeah. as amended that I'm seconding. Is that correct? Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. McCourt. The plan of how we deliver is just as important as the world plan itself. Having a plan without any idea about how we actually make it happen is pointless. Um, it's very easy to make plans, um, and I'm sure we've all seen that done in the past. Plans that sound wonderful and that sound marvellous, but actually, in reality, they don't get delivered because nobody's got any idea about how they're actually going to make them happen. So the fact that we have here a comprehensive plan, albeit still in draft, and will still need further amendments as it goes on, inevitably, because as you start to move through and you start to implement various parts of it, changes need to happen. We know that. But it is a really sound starting point for making sure that this is not just words and it's not just a report that ends up gathering dust on the shelf, but it's something that actually happens. And we have a way clearly identified here to deliver that, to start to deliver that. So I have no problem with it. Um, I think it's a, a really helpful thing to do. It's a really helpful thing to have in front of us um, as members. It will help because when we talk to our residents about what we're doing and the plans that we've got to improve, make improvements in Wirral, to improve people's lives, we'll be able to tell them exactly how we're going to do it and what the plans are and how we're going to deliver it. It will also help us to know what our officers are going to be doing. They can sort out what staff they need, how they're going to make it happen, and how they can allocate resources to make these plans a reality. So I commend this to you, Mr. Mayor, um, and I'm very pleased to second the, the acceptance of this plan. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, right of reply, then, is 
oppose of the motion, uh, Councillor Williamson, you now have your right of reply and may address the Council for up to three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm more than happy to fully support the amended um, motion. I don't think it's fair to say that this is an example of people not getting their own way in one forum, therefore having a second bite of the cherry. It's a democratic process. This is a democratic vote. We see it time and again in committees and call-ins. It's the process. We followed it. So, and I do believe that committees do work well together, currently anyway. So I hope to see that going forward, that that continues and strengthens. Um, so that's all I have to say, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, there being no further comments, we will now move to the vote. Can I suggest a card vote, please, Mr Mayor? Right. Thank you, Mayor. There having been uh, six members requesting a recorded vote, uh, I would ask uh, members, when your name is called, to speak into the microphone uh, and state what your vote is for, against, or abstain. Councillor Anderson. Against. Councillor Berry. Against. Councillor Bird. For. Councillor Booth. Against. Councillor Brain. For. Councillor Brennan. For. Councillor Burgess Joyce. Against. Councillor Cameron. Against. Councillor Campbell. Against. Councillor Cannon. For. Councillor Carubia. Councillor Cleary. For. Councillor Clements. Against. Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Collinson. For. Councillor Cook. For. For. <laughs> Councillor Cox. Against. Councillor Davies. For. Councillor Fawkes. Having to share a mic for <laughs> Councillor Fost. For Councillor Gardner. Against Councillor Gilchrist. For Councillor Gleaves. For Councillor Gorman. Oh, sorry. Councillor Carl Greeny. For Councillor Jeff Green. Against. Councillor Gray. For. Councillor Paul Hayes. Against. Councillor Stephen Hayes. For. Councillor Andrew Hodson. Against. Councillor Cathy Hodson. Against. Councillor Adrian Jones. For. Councillor Chris Jones. For. Councillor Sharon Jones. <coughs> Councillor Tony Jones. For. Councillor Jordan. Against. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Brian Kenny. For. Councillor Daisy Kenny. For. Councillor Lewis. Against. Councillor Martin. For. Councillor McLaughlin. For. Councillor McManus. For. Councillor Mitchell. For. Councillor Mountney. Councillor Nolan. For. Councillor O'Hagan. For. Councillor Rennie. Against. Councillor Robinson. For. Councillor Rowlands. Against. Councillor Smith. Councillor Spriggs. For. Councillor Stewart. For. 
Councillor Jason Walsh. Four. Councillor Joe Walsh. Four. Councillor Whittingham. Four. Councillor Irene Williams. Four. Councillor Jerry Williams. Four. Councillor Steve Williams. Against. Councillor Williamson. Four. Councillor Wood. Four. And Councillor Wright. Against. Thank you, members. Members, that vote is carried. 39 votes for, 21 against. Next item is the Revenue Outturn Report 2020-2021. This is a referral from the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 30th of June 2021. I call on Councillor Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Nolan to second. Proposer of the motion, Councillor Williamson, you now have five minutes to speak to your motion. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm sure everyone will be mightily relieved to hear that I won't be speaking to this for five minutes. I so move. For okay. second, Mr Mayor. Do you want to say that? Seconded. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, yeah, agreed by assent. Agreed by assent. All agreed. Thank you. Capital Outturn Report 2020-21. This is a referral from the Policy Resources Committee held on the 30th of June 2021. And I call upon Councillor Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call on Councillor Nolan to second. Councillor Williamson, you now have five minutes to speak to your motion. So move, Mr Mayor. Don't intend to speak. Thank you. So, sent again. All those in favour? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Thank you. That's fine. Uh, D is Treasury Management Annual Report. This is the referral from the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 28th of July 2021. And I call upon Councillor Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Nolan to second. So move, Mr Mayor. Second, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Yvonne. By assent. Thank you very much indeed. Um, item E, Community Safety Strategy. This is a referral from the Tourism, Communities, Culture and Leisure Committee held on the 27th of July, 2021. Uh, I call upon Councillor Cameron to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Spriggs to second. Yes, I'd like to move the report. And I didn't want to speak to it. I didn't think it was necessary. But unfortunately, we seem to have taken a turn. The Wirral document that we've just looked at in all its detail 
this is on the lead, the lead committee, the Tourism, Communities, Culture and Leisure, is on this uh, safe and pleasant communities and community safety strategy. You can see on page 85 of your packs a governance structure. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite happy to say that across all of these elements of this structure, I'm happy to work with any committees um, on any of those aspects, because I believe they're truly cross-cutting themes, and I think that's the only way you can go forward. So, so moved, Mr Mayor. Second. Seconded. I assent. Sorry, Stuart, I didn't see that. Sorry, uh, Mr Mayor, I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, I was, in fact, going to ask a question on this, but um, I only get one minute for a question. I get three minutes for a speech, so I'll turn it into a uh, speech if I can. And I welcome what um, Councillor Cameron says about uh, identifying um, some of the issues in this as cross-cutting. And nothing, I, I think, Mr Mayor, is more cross-cutting than the issue of alcohol, uh, which is mentioned within the Community Safety Strategy. Members will know that Will has a, uh, a particular uh, problem uh, with alcohol. Uh, the Will Plan, which we just agreed, tells us the hospital admission episodes for alcohol-specific conditions are almost double the national average. And when we dig down into that, the government website tells us that the trend here is increasing and getting worse. Uh, Mr Mayor, in 2015, the Council produced a specific alcohol strategy which expired in 2020 and it also carried out an alcohol inquiry which was led by a social enterprise using a citizens jury model of engagement which made a number of important recommendations which included making the whole of rural and no streets drinking zone, limiting the number of licensed premises and making it easier for the public to object to licensing applications. The Community Safety Strategy now before us just contains one page dedicated to dealing with the issue of alcohol, where it's combined with drugs in general. The Will Plan doesn't specifically highlight alcohol as a priority, uh, and the Community Safety Strategy is unimpressive in identifying potential actions to tackle the ongoing public health problems. Mr Mayor, this is a huge area of ongoing concern. And I just wanted to raise in this forum um, to try and ensure that you know, this issue isn't uh, ignored um, and to ask relevant chair people, the leadership of the council in general uh, to review the 2015 strategy uh, for its effectiveness review also the recommendations of the 2016 inquiry to see how many maybe are outstanding and could be revisited uh, and try and use the governance structures referred to to ensure that we have a new cross-cutting policy uh, specific to the problem uh, of alcohol. Um, Mr Mayor, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for asking you. Just one second, Phil. Councillor Gray. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have a proposed amendment to this item. Sorry, the... Sorry, we're sharing microphones, so it's a bit difficult. I have a proposed amendment to this item, if you want me to explain. Sorry. Have you got a second there? Thank you, Steve. Can you tell us what your amendment is, please? The Vision Zero is a stated aim that no one is hurt or killed on our roads. And the Road Safety Working Group earlier this year of my committee decided that this was a primary aim and this was agreed at committee. And therefore, I propose a third recommendation in addition to the first two, and that is three, that the road safety section includes explicit reference to the adoption of a Vision Zero approach. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It's not coming through very well down here. Just repeating that. You yeah. can take your mic up to you, okay. please. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll say the whole thing again. It's not, not very long. Vision Zero is the stated aim that no one is hurt or killed on our roads and the policies that uh, support this. 
The Road Safety Working Group of my committee decided that this was a primary aim and this was then agreed at committee and therefore I propose that road safety, the road safety section, so the first two recommendations I have no problem with at all, it's an additional third recommendation and that is that the road safety section includes explicit reference to the adoption of a vision zero approach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. It's open to... Phil? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Whilst I briefly heard about this before the meeting, just by bumping into a member, I needed some explanation as to what Vision Zero was. Some information has been given to us. I'm looking for some assurances that doesn't undo some of the points that Councillor Cameron has made, because I was, of course, a member of the Tourism, Culture and Leisure Committee, and this was discussed by us the other night. And the road safety is one of the key pages in this. Um, as I mentioned before, um, if we all keep an idea of what's going on in the various committees, that's a great, brave new world in the committee system, so nobody feels this is my bit and that's my bit. If Councillor Gray can assure us that this is um, helping to keep track of things rather than moving that work that's with tourism, community, cultures and leisure in general anywhere else and still enables tourism, communities, culture and leisure to consider these things, that would be helpful. On a wider issue, Mr Mayor, I've had to put the earphones on in order to hear a number of speakers. I now have to wear two hearing aids, thanks to the impact of petrol mowers over about 20 odd years. And I appreciate, as Councillor Collins was saying earlier, that if members aren't able to speak or lean into their microphones, it causes tremendous problems for anyone members. And if our officers can think up some way of improving things if we're to carry on in this room, that would be very helpful. But uh, the key point is that what Councillor Gray is suggesting, I want assurance, is it doesn't take away from the work that Councillor Cameron is working on, nor does it take anything away from that uh, partnership board that reports into Councillor Cameron's committee. Talk is this. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted, um, I wonder if Liz could just clarify for me what, um, what the term means. This visible, what was it you called it? Zero, visible zero, was it? So it, it, it's, a, it's just a, it's a stated aim and it's followed by many different, it's followed by other councils, it's followed across Europe, it's followed internationally as well. And it's a stated aim that you will use education and engineering to um, construct a situation where your ambition is nobody hurt or killed on your roads and you so you're it's, it's a constantly evolving thing it's not a set thing but it's the it's very important that you don't have accepted collateral damage it's it's the vision is nobody hurt or killed on the roads and it's increasingly common uh, that it's adopted by uh, regulate by authorities in britain as well as around europe and the world if i may mr mayor um that sounds great um Having sat the other day with the police and various other people with regards to a death on one of the roads in my ward, um, that kind of thing was going on. And has always been going on, so I'm just wondering what the emphasis is and what difference it will make or how that difference will appear from what we're doing currently. It's, it's, it, the aim ultimately is to go to a more foolproof situation where... Um, it, it becomes less possible to make the mistakes that people might make. The onus is on individuals, the sort of shared road, shared responsibility, and it's a, it's a slight it's a it's a slight nuance change in emphasis ultimately that it's about um, vulnerability hierarchies and it's about recognising those and doing the research into it. So it, it's increasingly accepted. It's nothing radical or, or unusual. And it's nothing okay, that can it, doesn't, I, it doesn't, to go back to uh, Councillor Gilchrist's point, it doesn't me, contradict anything that's Councilor been Gray, done before. Can I, can I just suggest that if members want to debate this and discuss it, that it goes back to the original committee? Okay. That's my recommendation. I would second that, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, we have a second to this motion. They've not allowed me to speak yet, so... 
I'll bring you in now, Stephen. Well, I think, Mr Mayor, what, what we're demonstrating here is that various committees uh, assign stuff to their work programme. We set up a road safety working party. All parties agreed with all the recommendations. This was one of the recommendations that, that come out on our agenda tomorrow at uh, Climate uh, and Environment. We have a road safety report and we're just trying to pass on the, the work of that and one of the recommendations of that working party to become encompassed in what is a uh, community safety strategy. It's not you know, it's not underhand, it's not trying to usurp anybody. So definitely we've seen two examples tonight where resolutions have been moved democratically at one committee and either counteracted or are purposefully being ignored by officers or ignored by members and not passed on to other committees for consideration. So what we're asking for, you guys wanted the committee system, there are flaws in the committee system, it does lead to silo working and we need to iron them out. And that's what's being asked for tonight, is to have a cross... If we have a road, sa uh, road safety remit at our committee, and we are saying something entirely different in another document. It will be open to abuse or be op open to criticism. So we're just trying to round the policies up. No problem with it coming back. It's coming to our committee tomorrow night. We'll probably make the same recommendation again. And if you want us to move a formal resolution tomorrow night uh, and, and tick that off and get democratic... Um, uh, agreement with that at our committee, then that will be the course of action. But it's not uh, an attempt to undermine anybody. It's simply trying to bring all the different committees and policies uh, together. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have to say, Councillor Gray did um, give us the courtesy of sharing this prior to the start of the meeting with myself and, and Councillor Hayes. And, and uh, on the face of it, I don't completely understand um, what, what, this, what this is, although I had no objection to the amendment she was likely to move. However, it's, it is a concern that committees are doing a piece of work. They are representative of all the parties, apart from us, that's you, too small, but all the other parties are represented on these committees. And what comes out of those committees is, is a, a, should be a cross-party Agreement, and I am a little bit concerned that this is the second time that Councillor Gray has chosen to do this tonight. I mean, the Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee did a piece of work on um, the previous one, and we made some recommendations as to a way forward, which were accepted by all representatives on that committee. Um, and then it does seem, whether or not Councillor uh, Williamson agrees with it or not, it does seem like that recommendation, that amendment that came forward earlier was sidestepping the work of the Constitution Oversight Committee. And this almost feels like it's sidestepping. Well, it, it's not fully... It, it could have been done at committee. That's the point I'm making. So, whereas Councillor Fawkes said the committee system isn't perfect, actually, there was a scope there to make this part of that committee's recommendation. And as he says, they're going to go back tomorrow and probably will do that. I do agree that with your suggestion that this go back to the parent committee and be dealt with there. Look, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's really, um, well, it's grossly discourteous, actually, for Councillor Gray to share with some members and not others be before a meeting. Um, you know, if we're going to work in this system and start springing amendments that's not written down and people haven't got to study, then we might be in for long council meetings in future. That's all I'll say over, over that. And why did not Councillor Gray, Councillor Williamson, raise this at the last PR when the community safety strategy went to it? As Councillor McLaughlin has just said, he had ample opportunity to raise it for council. And I believe Councillor Spriggs, as a vice chair of tourism, um, did not raise it, raise it either. Um, it's grossly discourteous to spring this at the moment. Nobody disagrees with reducing road safety to zero. Who wants? What is the policy to make to increase them? It's ridiculous. You know, everybody wants to see no road safety, road, road deaths or injuries. So, Mr. Mayor, I would like to, this to be referred back to the committee for consideration. Thanks very much. Mr. Mayor.
If you forgive me, members, Mr. Mayor, uh, the, the Mayor made a suggestion earlier, but it was a suggestion. There's now been a formal proposal uh, from uh, Councillor Anderson, which Councillor Venny has seconded. That's a procedural motion uh, to adjourn this debate uh, for it to be referred back to the uh, committee concerned or uh, indeed for PR to pick up. That, as a procedural motion, is voted upon without debate, uh, and so that goes straight to the vote, Mr. Mayor. Uh, point, 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 point of order. Point of order. Um, Mr. Mayor, the point, of, the point of, uh, is that the parent committee, there's been a mistake about which committee is the parent committee here. So the parent yeah, committee is, is the Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee. We have the working group on road safety. We voted about that work, the findings of the working group on road safety and we've got road safety on our agenda tomorrow night. So we are the parent group for road safety. And so that's why this amendment was put in place, simply to make sure that what's happening in, in the wider um, arena matches what we're doing in our committee so that we're all on the same hymn sheet and nobody, there's no uh, policies being passed through that might be in conflict. If it gets referred back to Mr. a parent Mayor, committee... I'm sorry, I thought there's no debate sorry, on I'm this. Sorry, I'm still, I'm just well, finishing off. Well, shouldn't be, you're trying to hoover everything else yeah. up. So. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, I'm still speaking. Sorry, forgive me, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe I need to interrupt. Uh, members, th this is a procedural motion to adjourn this debate. Um, whether it is adjourned to go to PNR as the body that deals with cross-cutting issues or elsewhere is, a, is something for discussion uh, outside of this chamber this evening if this procedural motion is passed. But as a procedural motion, it goes straight to the vote without comment or debate. So, Mr. Mr. Mayor, can I just ask then, because we the actually hadn't finished the matter around the community safety strategy and I wanted to speak to that. If, if passed, uh, because this would be to adjourn uh, the whole of this debate, then the whole item would then be referred back, uh, presumably as a cross-cutting matter to PNR, uh, before it came back to this council. So that will be the amendment and the main debate that would be adjourned and you would simply move on to the next item. You had, you, listen, you, we've had the, re, the report from, from the um, Director of Law. Is it going to make any difference to you what you're going to say? Yeah, I'll, just a point of order. I, I want to ask a question of clarification to the Borough Solicitor. So, uh, Mr. McCall, it was my, my impression of the committee system that a council, full council, um, is the sovereign body of this, of this council. Um, so, are you saying that we cannot change uh, decisions or recommendations that come from individual committees, or are we simply here tonight just to rubber stamp what committees uh, are deciding? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm not saying any such thing. Uh, I'm saying there has been a procedural motion uh, put to this council as the sovereign body to adjourn this debate, uh, and therefore that and only that is now going to the debate. If lost, you continue where you left off, continue with the debate on the amendment, uh, vote on the amendment and then to the substantive item. Uh, if passed, uh, the council moves on to the next item.
Can I suggest an adjournment now, please, Mr Mayor?
Okay, welcome back. Is everybody back now? Okay. So we're all clear, yeah? Fine. Um, can we move forward with where we were before with the amendments? So we'll uh, move on now to the debate. So um, anybody wish to... Sorry, who's... I, I can't see these people. Yeah, Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Sorry, it's, it's, it's <laughs> sorry, didn't recognise me with my mask on. Um, can I just ask a technical question, really? Um, this has come from a committee where this issue has been resolved. Surely it should be for council to endorse or send back to that committee. Is there anything in the constitution to say that council can amend something that one of our committees has resolved? Just asking that question, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, this is an item of business for Council as, uh, the de as a decision-making body, uh, and therefore it acts very much as a committee. Uh, the difference is it's highly unusual for officers to present a report straight into full Council. So, as you say, normally these things come through either one or more committees before they get here, so it becomes a uh, purely political debate by the time you've got here and there's no opportunity uh, to ask questions of officers because that's all been done. Uh, however, as an item of business, it does mean that amendments can be moved on the night and without notice, uh, as has been done this evening. Uh, now, clearly, one of those amendments may be to refer uh, a matter back for further consideration uh, some or all of the uh, the item that's before you for business. So uh, whilst there's a recommendation from a committee, members are free to put in uh, one or more amendments, but just that it is quite unusual because, as I say, uh, by the time it's got here, uh, most of the questions and discussions have taken place and it's here for endorsement and a straight political uh, discussion. Uh, but but obviously there may be very significant differences of opinion uh, whereby uh, motions, uh, amendments to motions can be put forward or, or in other instances small technical ones. I hope that answers the question there. Thank you, Mr May. Yeah, Mr May, can I ask, do we have the relevant officer here to give us a report on the implications of the change that's been suggested so we know actually what the consequences of putting that in very implicitly I think the amendment said made it explicit and implicit in the in this particular report or this particular plan so I feel I would benefit from hearing the officer's advice about what that means what the implications are across a range of items before I, in all fairness, before I actually know what I'm voting for or not. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Deputy Mayor asked uh, a question that's actually quite similar to Councillor Jones's, uh, which is that uh, full council does not uh, ask questions of officers unless it is a report directly from officers. Uh, officers are not present normally to be able to ask questions in this way, which is why I think there was the implication behind Councillor Jones's question as, is it possible to refer these matters back? Um, and when there are complex issues raised anew, uh, I, I would say that is traditionally the way of dealing with this thing because, as I say, this is meant to be a point of finality and the uh, discussion and debate, almost purely political. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's move this closer. In the interval, I've looked at the agenda for the committee that's meeting later this week that covers with the issues raised into the environment. Section 4.30 in that report and 4.31 
refer to the new rural community safety strategy, but of course that sits with Councillor Cameron's committee. What I'm not happy about, I don't regard myself as some great guardian of the constitution, some Methuselah that sits on some cloud and comes down with decisions about who's going to do what and where. We did spend some time um, looking at the issues raised by two committee chairs and believed that we had found a formula for continuing work that would recognise how, how they saw their roles. We now have a, a third committee chair involved in a process. But to try and summarise, Mr Mayor, even though I have sympathy with what's just been read out to us or described to us as the purpose of the resolution of reference to that um, decision made by a body and recommended to us a national or international body about road safety, I, in principle, have greater unease about items being parachuted into a council meeting with, where members, admittedly, can take the word of a member proposing it, but without documentation, without some history or without some written report, I'm rather reluctant to invite council to make a decision on something without having more background information. Okay, th thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, from what I understand, um, the amendments as moved by, by Liz is for an ambition for zero um, no zero casualties, casualties, uh, serious injuries, and deaths on our roads. Uh, it's an ambition, um, and I don't see a problem with that. And I, I, I'm, I'm just curious why we'd need a, a report setting out why we should support that or, or otherwise. How many casualties are acceptable? I think that's the. I think, I th I think that's the question. Um, you know, pe people who are opposing this resolution. Uh, this um, amendment should be asking themselves it's just an ambition it's, it's an ambition why, why, and I, I've, I've always had this view why should we have an ambition for there to be zero deaths and serious injuries on our roads um, no to, 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 to advise I don't think we're being ambitious enough um, if, if people don't agree with us then how many casualties are acceptable um, now you, it's, it's a simple, no, it's as simple as that, really. Um, to, to me, there is no argument. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to move away from the um, road safety amendment, if I can, and to look at another area of the report. There are many um, parts of this report, actually, that relate to. Um, not only to the Health and Wellbeing Board, but also to the Adult Social Care and Public Health Committee. Um, so certainly as far as the cross-cutting themes are concerned, um, there, are, there are many areas, I think, um, that are of joint interest to my committee too. And we really do need to ensure that we all work together on this strategy in order to deliver it. Um, particularly on the drugs and alcohol um, area that I wanted to comment I was privileged to go to a presentation um, and well, a whole afternoon, a couple of weeks back, about Project ADA, which is delivering on reducing drug-related deaths. And as a lesson in partnership working, it was a masterclass as to how the police, social care, health are all working together, all different aspects of the work that all of us do. The voluntary sector, um, people with lived experience, they're all working together um, on Project Data. And so far, given it's only been going a couple of months, the results are seriously impressive. Um, but if we are able to um, participate in projects like that with partners, um, in relation to drugs and in relation to alcohol. And I, I um, don't disagree with the um, suggestions around alcohol-free zones and attempting to deal with um, alcohol, particularly street alcohol that we see 
um, in so many of our um, centres, community centres, then um, I think that's really important. So obviously domestic abuse as well is another of those cross-cutting issues. It's one that reports into my committee, so I would be um, very happy to, to work um, in a joint way on that. I do think it's important. We do all have to work together. But I did just want to pay a public compliment to those people working on Project ADA because um, it is impressive. It is an important project. And it is looking as though we can make a real difference. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much indeed, Ron. Um, I've got, I, Les, can I just say that I can't bring you in at the present moment in time because you've already spoken and, and put the forward the proposal. So I, I want to just hold it at a moment, Jeanette. We are talking about um, the debate here. So, here, Jeanette, you want to speak on it? Yeah, I'm just going to broaden it uh, out to our community safety strategy as well. So, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm not yeah, sure you've got that point of question. Uh, members, you are still debating the amendment. Um, you haven't yet moved on to the main debate, so just to remind you. Uh, thanks, and, and, and thank you very much, Mr. McCourt, for clarifying that, because that was going to be the first part of what I asked. What, um, I was getting um, uncertain about what we were actually debating now, but we are debating the amendment. Um, having already decided now, as I understand it, that it won't be referred back to the, uh, a, any committee. Um, and I'm wondering whether, um, for further investigation, which actually we now probably have understood is, is, is probably not the safest thing to do because we haven't got officers here who can provide us with the information which we need to make that sensible decision. However, however that decision has been taken not to refer it back to committee. And I would suggest maybe that the most sensible way forward now is for this um, amendment to be withdrawn and then there is a possibility of representing it to the committee where it can be investigated and added if need be. The other possibility is that it gets voted down tonight and then it's lost. So I would ask the mover and seconder to consider that as a form of, as a way forward so that everybody can get uh, what they want out of this. Nobody, I don't think, in the whole council is suggesting that we, if they're opposing this um, amendment, that they uh, don't support the concept of, um, of a, a, a casualty-free road safety policy and it is good to have an ambition but to be absolutely honest if you haven't got a plan for making that ambition and putting that into practice that is tokenism and what we don't want to do with this council is to indulge in tokenism it is actually conceited to do that and it's not the way that we'll serve our residents to the best effect Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've got a copy in front of me here of Road Safety, a report produced by the Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee, March 2021, final report, which was... Can I, can I stop you there, please, Liz? Yeah. But we've got to be absolutely grown up about the whole thing here. And the most important thing is, do you wish to withdraw or do you want to leave it as is? Uh, I don't wish to withdraw because this has as one of its primary aims the adoption of Vision Zero. And it, this was accepted by my committee, which is the, obviously the parent committee for road safety. And so therefore, I don't wish to withdraw. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I was ever so slightly confused. Um, on, um, on, what, on what the amendment refers to. What, what I can see in front of me is a copy of a report that was considered by a programme committee, the recommendations of which were agreed by that committee. On the agenda for council, I can see council is either, is, uh, it's a, well it says, and I quote, the council is requested to approve the community safety strategy and I guess that's what's been 
moved uh, by, the, uh, by the chair. So the amendment, so any amendment, I would suggest, is to what's in front of us on this agenda. I agree with that, it is deficient. Uh, I made a very brief contribution myself and felt it was deficient on the, in the area of, um, of alcohol and, and Councillor Nolan um, has also referred to that particular area uh, as, as Chair of Hair Committee. So what we, have in front, what we have in terms of the debates is the Chair of Adult Social Care raising issues. We have the Chair of environment and transport race, raising issues, which for me, and, and I'm persuaded by their argument, means that council should not, in fact, approve the community safety strategy. Now, in casting one's vote to not approve it, that doesn't kill it. We're going to need a community safety strategy, but it does have the effect of sending it back to officers, you know, Initially, we rely on officers to work together to get all the relevant elements into the strategy for approval. It strikes me that agreeing the amendment wouldn't be enough because I, I get the impression of what Councillor Gray wants is the strategy itself changing so that it includes a commitment to zero accidents. So in other words, the text of the strategy has to be reopened and changed. If that's the case, then it will need to go round something to come back here for adoption as the actual strategy. I mean, that, that strikes me as the, as, as the process. If the director of law disagrees, then, then perhaps I can, as I say, only get a minute for a question, get three minutes for a speech. So I'll throw a question into the speech and maybe ask if we were, as a council, to reject the strategy because we feel it's deficient in some, uh, some aspects, what would happen then? Uh, Mayor, I'm, I'm trying to pull out the uh, legal elements, as it were, uh, to the question thrown in the speech. Um, however, my understanding is the amendment is to include the council will adopt a, a, vi a vision zero approach. That's it, beginning and end, inserted into uh, the current uh, sections of the uh, strategy. Uh, so if the amendment is uh, adopted this evening and the overall strategy is adopted that means it will be the strategy as on the papers before you with the additional words uh, the council uh, will adopt a vision zero approach full stop if it is to be more than that and there's a request for work to be done then of course that's not the wording of the um, uh, proposal that's before you as an amendment, that's something else. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm, I'm like Stuart, a little bit confused because I'm not, I'm not convinced this is, the, this is the right way to go. First of all, I think one of, the, one of the members mentioned it was an ambition. Well, you know, do we have to have an ambition into legislation? If it's an ambition, it can sit anywhere. Um, the deputy leader of the council mentioned that everybody was working together quite happily, so does it really matter where it sits? And, and my question really to you um, is, would this not have been better proposed as a... Um, I forgot the word now. Uh, instead of an amendment, would this not have been better as a proposal uh, to, the, to the motion or a motion? Uh, if, if you forgive me, members, that's a judgment, and you're here to make that judgment, not me.
Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just, I just have to remind members, uh, respectfully, you know, Council, Councillor Kelly, Councillor Nolan, um, this went to an all-member workshop twice for input. It went to tourism. It then went to PNR, and now it's come here. And no one's saying that you know these documents are fixed, set in stone. It becomes organic. People make suggestions. People have workshops. Good ideas come forward. But I have to say to Councillor Whittingham, I've never heard something about it's absurd in all my life. Why should I? Of course it's an ambition to have zero road safety deaths. Who wouldn't want that? What kind of psychopath wouldn't want that? So we're not, dis we're not describing that now. We just want to know. And, you know, there is financial implications to this. I haven't seen what Councillor Gray alluded to. I don't know what highway infrastructure is going to be there. And I really do hope she's suggesting that if she can't find half a million pounds for car parking charges, um, how is she going to find the money to implement this strategy as well? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of comments from me. Uh, well, first of all, um, it's a good thing that road safety is in the community strategy because it wasn't there before. So that's, that's certainly a positive. Um, I think just because uh, nobody's raised it previously at committee, and I'm a member of the, um, the relevant committee, uh, that doesn't mean that somebody else can't raise it. I mean, that's obviously a minority of councillors. And if somebody here has got a better idea uh, than what councillors on the original committees had, then I think that's absolutely fair enough that they propose that. Um, I think, you know, this is not the first time that road safety has come up this evening. I've mentioned it myself earlier, and I've, I've mentioned a frustration uh, at the council's, um, the council's track record and the current approach. Um, I certainly don't feel it's good enough. The Green Party group doesn't feel that it's good enough. Uh, and the difference with the Vision Zero approach is that it's, it's a change of culture. And we do need a change of culture within the council when it comes to road safety, because the current culture is not good enough. And Vision Zero is a systems approach as opposed to an individual approach. It is basically a change of culture. And I think by incorporating this amendment tonight, which I support and welcome, that that will help us to move forward on this absolutely vital issue. We all want zero um, injuries and fatalities on our roads, we're not achieving it. And does anybody seriously think that our current approach is going to achieve that? No, it's not. We need something better. Vision Zero is something better, and therefore I support the amendment. Uh, uh, yeah, it won't go any further. Uh, just make a few points in relation to what this debate's about. And uh, I hear what Councillor Cleary says about getting an idea and moving it forward and changing. I would uh, respectfully ask him to look at, at the history of uh, this council and the, the way it's moved and relevant committees have looked after certain issues in relation to KSIs on this. Liberal Democrats for many years have pressed, along with many others, for changes to the way this works. I've been on the council long enough, Mr Mayor, to remember when we had a highways committee, where we had a police inspector for highways for the will, who sat on that committee with us. And we discussed all these issues on a regular basis on how to reduce the amount of uh, KSIs on the will. That falls down then to two bodies, and that's the de decision that the council wants and aims for, which we always have had, to aim for the lowest possible that we can attain. Now, I've got no objection to what the proposals are going forward. What does concern me is the comments uh, Councillor Gray made in her speech is that the ability to look at traffic calming measures and other things to reduce KSIs. It's something the council has done for many, many years. Mr. Mayor. Every year we have reports that came to relevant committees 
it, they've changed over the years from, uh, as the as council itself changed in the way it runs itself and the way it's been uh, moved forward. But it's not just one party that thinks things are wrong in this council, you know. Uh, it's been going on for many years. The main point is that we need to get the arguments across to not only the police, who are a major part of this in the format that we work forward, but to government itself, because I think what these are aiming for at the moment is a complete change in the hierarchy of the highway system, and that is to have pedestrians first, cyclists seconds, automobiles, and then heavy goods transports after that. And that will not happen until government of the day decide to have a change in that format. Thank you, Mr May. Yeah, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Can I very briefly speak to this? Um, can I first of all say that Vision Zero, um, it's a, it is a concept, it's not a new one. What it does is it challenges the fatalism, uh, which has been expressed by one or two members this evening, that there will always be some casualties on roads. You know, people have come to terms with it. There's tens of thousands in America every year and so on. Uh, some societies haven't accepted it, and where it hasn't been accepted, and all the measures have been put in place, for example, in Sweden, a good while ago, the first example where it was successful, you know, combination of reducing speed through legislation, uh, through uh, traffic calming measures, uh, for example, our motion this evening, which may not have time to be debated, uh, at modal filters, you know, is one of the other moves that, that, that can uh, enhance this. And education, so you've got the law, reducing the speed, education and traffic calming, and the, you know, the belief that we can actually reduce road fatalities to zero. Now, Vision Zero, all it does is it reflects the work and the conclusions that the working party over two sessions came to, that, you know, we really have to believe in this. It is essential wording, but it reflects the philosophy. And I think to throw it out on whatever nebulous basis that's been suggested by some members this evening uh, and, you know, kick it back to the committee uh, is, is just a waste of our, or well, further waste of our time this evening. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be very, very quick. Um, I find it shocking that Councillor Anderson should think that my you know, ambition for zero, you know, zero tolerance for road casualties is, is absurd. Um, I just can't get my head around that. Uh, also, he equates uh, road safety and the cost of uh, keeping people safe with car parking charges. Now, if, if, if the increase in car parking charges puts more people on public transport, thus reduce the number of cars on the road, then I think, I think that's a bit of a, bit of a win. Uh, I'm really disappointed. Uh, most of the contribution tonight has been about process. This committee, this committee, this committee, this committee, this, this committee, that. Um, if, if we're not careful, such an important subject will end up being just kicked around you know, within the bureaucracy of the council uh, between committees and never get really addressed. Yes, you're not the only one bitterly disappointed. I think some of the conversation around process is because there seems to be a demonstration of how committee systems are flawed and how committee systems could be so much better. I'd like you to give it a try. I'd like you to try at least for more than, you know, uh, 18 months with a new system and not try to constantly demonstrate how it may not work to, you, to your advantage in particular. But particularly when a group votes against the mayor's procedural um, idea, that, that seems odd and then uh, now we're all trying to spin it back to whether we are tokenistic on reducing KSIs or not. Nobody in this chamber, I honestly hand on heart believe everybody in this chamber wants to have zero deaths on the road or zero, zero KSIs, it's not a bad ambition. Unfortunately Councillor Cleary sits on the 
on the TCL committee and didn't raise it then. It already went to PNR. Councillor Gray and Councillor Cleary sit on PNR and they didn't raise it then. So my item, I am, can only assume that it is not about the core issue. This document was produced, co-produced with elected members as well as victims of crime, all the key statutory and voluntary agencies. It wasn't just members' ideas, just members' ambitions. That seems to be where people just choose to state their claim and put their tokenist views forward. You've done a disservice to everybody that was involved in this document, but we've always said it can always adapt. It's a living, breathing document. Strategies never should sit on the shelf getting dusty. They should always evolve and change. And there would have been an opportunity to do that, but you chose tonight to do a last-minute amendment. Um, unfortunately, that's why we've ended up with such a lengthy debate. Um, all those in favour, please show. What, what are we talking about now? If, <laughs> uh, if, if I may, may uh, Mr Mayor... Uh, Don't that, make it up. Yes, that, that brings uh, you to the end of the debate on the amendment. That amendment was to have explicit reference to adoption of a Vision Zero approach, i.e. Uh, the strategy would include the wording that the Council... Uh, intends to adopt a Vision Zero approach. Um, Sorry, it is for clarification. If that amendment is lost tonight, it does not exclude the possibility of it going to committee and being re-examined and being added to the strategy, does it? Am I wrong in assuming that? Uh, you're correct, Councillor McCocken. Um, no, this is not a. For it to be included. Yes. Okay, so, so the adoption of this strategy by council can be amended at any time, as thank indeed. you. Thank you. Okay. Now, all in favour, please show of the amendments. Well carried. After all, that's So that is four, the amendment 53, against three, abstentions four. God almighty. So, Councillor Cameron, is it? This is
We're now going to debate the substantive motion. Believe it or not. So, are there any speakers? Sorry, Gina. Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, bring our minds back to the community safety strategy and just um, commend the sections, particularly on hate crime, um, on domestic violence, antisocial behaviour. I think. All of those things are absolutely vital to residents of Wirral, um, particularly as there was a transphobic attack in Central Park in Liscard uh, recorded two weeks ago. So, you know that that you know that comes in under hate crime. So, and also with the prevent strategy around tackling extremism, well, from from all areas, extremism. So it was just to, to commend it really. Thank you. Well, as councillors taken a view on the introduction of the document, uh, that Vision Zero, then I'll work with anyone to bring it to reality. My concern was about process and bringing things to council without full detail. In the meantime, I did look at Vision Zero's website, and in a spare moment, members might see the number of councils that are taking part in that, but it seemed to me not too many are actually taking part of it and I'll, I'll leave members to look at that and then we'll put that um, amendment into practice and mean it rather than just pass something for a token. Uh, sorry, I, I drifted then, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm, I apologise for that, uh, and seconded Mr. Mayor. Councillor Cameron, you now have the right to reply and may address the council for three minutes. Thank you. Um, only just to say thank you to the officers who worked who worked really hard on this strategy document. I don't think we need to go into any further detail. Thank you for any genuinely positive contributions to this this evening. There will be no further comments, then we will move to the vote. All those in favour? I think it's a full house now, I don't think. Yes. What's the difference? I think the easiest way then is, is are there any votes against? Abstentions? One? Wait for the rules. Thank you. Oh, sorry. And the result is 459 against zero and abstention one. Right, next item. Um, item F Members' Code of Conduct. This is a referral from the Constitution and Standards Committee held on the 23rd of June to 2021. I call upon Councillor Phil Gilchrist to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call on Councillor Paul Stewart to second those. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm happy to ask Council to support the work being done by the Constitution Standards Committee to improve and bring up to date our Code of Conduct to incorporate the work done by the LGA and other bodies and enshrine the Nolan principles in all the work that we do and recommend it to Council. So second, Mr Mayor.
I'm not aware of any amendments at the present time, so I will move to the debate. Is there any debate? No. Um, are there any speakers more? No. We have up to three minutes to address the Council. No. A second of the motion, Councillor Stewart, you now have three minutes to speak to the motion. Only three minutes. Mr Mayor, I'm, I'm OK. I'm not going to speak to this motion. Thank you. Um, right to reply, propose the motion. Councillor Gilchrist, you now have your right to reply and may address the Council for up to three minutes. Oh, I waive it, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much indeed. There being no further comments, we will move to the vote. All those in favour? Okay. It's a full up, Any against? Any abstentions? That's carried unanimously. Um, G. Vacant Committee Place on the Regulatory and General Purposes Committee. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a report from the Director of Law and Governance for the Council to consider. Members, I would draw to your attention to the fact that in order to exempt this committee from political balance requirements, this will require a unanimous vote by Council. I call on the Councillor Andrew Hodgson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Chris Jones to second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to speak on this briefly. I asked the, uh, the Office of the Solicitor to bring this report to the Council because there are only a few councillors from different parties who are actually propping up the uh, licensing committee. Uh, we find it difficult to get people to come on board. So any, they were going to remove this uh, place. And I said, no, we want it because we need as many people in the pool as we can get. So it would be unfortunate if anyone voted against this. I don't see why they would want to. It just means that we're going to have more people in the pool. And I have an advert now. If, if you are on, on that committee and your name is there, if you could at some time please volunteer your name forward, it would assist us. Thank you. Um, I'm not aware of any amendments, so I will move to the debate. Uh, are there any speakers? Okay, well done. Um, then the second of the motion, Councillor Jones, you now have up to three minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just to agree with uh, what Councillor Hodgson has said, and I think um, particularly because there's only one Liberal member, if uh, Councillor Mitchell was ever on holiday or ill at the moment, the committee couldn't, subcommittee couldn't meet so it just makes sense to, to broaden the pool and take it out of uh, fiscal numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hodgson, you now have the right to reply and may address the council for up to three minutes. Um, I think all that's been said has been said. It's quite a simple request if everyone could vote for it. Yeah. And um, I'll waive the rest of the three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so we move straight to the vote. Um, there will be no further comments. We will move to the vote, uh, where again I remind Council that recommendation two within the report would require a unanimous vote to pass. So all those in favour? Anyone against? Any abstention? No, that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, item H, Outside Body, North Western Fisheries and Conservation Authority. Councillor Liz Gray wishes to stand down from this body, so the Council is requested to appoint a replacement member. I understand there is a proposal to be made by Councillor Anderson, so I call on Councillor Anderson to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, may I move 
that Council delegates appointment to this body to the next Regulatory and General Purposes Committee meeting. Okay, Let's second it. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Janet. So, straight vote. All those in favour? Anyone against? And abstentions? No. Um, the next one is um, six month attendance rule um, S85 brackets one of the Local Government Act in 1972. Uh, members, this report requests that Councillor Andrew Corkill is granted permission to be absent from council meetings for the remainder of the 2021-22 municipal year. Can we agree by assent, please? Thank you, sir. Pros and second. Sorry. I'm happy to propose this, Mr. Mayor. Happy to second it. Thank you so much indeed. Yeah, all agreed. Right, uh, the next one is uh, reports and recommendations from council committees for consideration. Decisions taken since the last council meeting. Members are asked to receive the minutes of committee meetings listed on the summons and that this is now also the opportunity to ask questions of committee chairs. Remind members of the 45 minute time limit. No questions will exceed one minute and no answer will exceed two minutes. I would draw members' attention to one minute and two officers' decisions in particular in accordance with part four, section four, paragraph nine of the constitution. In that decisions were taken which were regarded as urgent by the committee and an officer. These were minute 109 of the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 24th of March 21, uh, proposed grant agreement with LCR uh, Combined Authority uh, for the costs of the acquisitions of 92 Grains Road, Birkenhead, as normal acceptance of the offer was required by the 31st of March. Two urgent officers' decisions, one on the 8th of July 2021 by the Director of Neighbourhood Services, um, COVID, COVID Local Support Grant, extension number two, and a decision on 5th of August. 21 by the Director of Regeneration and Place, a town deal for Birkenhead, acceptance of head of terms. I am not aware of any questions being asked in advance of the meeting. I would ask members that if they do have a question, they make reference to the committee and minute number that their question relates to. I am not going to read through each meeting individually but will instead refer to this item in block. Are there any questions relating to any of the decisions taken since the last council meeting? I can see some hands coming up. Nothing on that side, all the way around, so I'll start from... Can I just start at the back, please? I can't see who it is. Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Gardner hiding at the back. Um, question for Julie McManus, Chair of Housing Committee. Uh, Policy and Resources Committee, 24th of March, Minute 110, refers to the proposal to acquire units for affordable housing use. Thank you. At the end of August, the government announced 8.6 billion for affordable homes across the country with 5.2 billion allocated to be spent outside London. With the cancellation of the latest housing committee meeting, does the chair think that the housing needs of the most deprived citizens of our borough are being met? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question, Andrew. I think I heard most of it. Um, 
It is something that the committee um, need to discuss because I agree with you that um, some housing needs aren't currently being met um, and certainly that's in terms of um, the types of homes that people are living in, um, both private rented, mostly private rented, um, and so I agree that will be on the um, next housing committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's a very short question. I, I wouldn't want to be accused of filibustering. Um, the, the question is for Jeanette Williamson, uh, leader of the council, but uh, chair of the Policy and Resources Committee. Uh, this is referring to minute 84, if you want to have a look at it, uh, Jeanette. It is, in light of the capitalization directive and oversight from the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, does the chair still think the use of up to five million pounds uh, on a community bank is a good use of council resources? Thank you. Uh, the money has been set aside in the capital programme and as it stands, I do think it is, yeah. I think you were pointing at me, Mr. Mayor, so I'll go. Um, question for Councillor Liz Gray, Chair of the Environment, Climate, Emergency and Transport Committee. Um, following on from the Environment Committee meeting on the 14th of June 2021, when the committee considered the car parking charges option report, this is uh, minute eight refers to this, can you please tell me whether you were aware that a traffic regulation order process could take up to nine months, therefore putting at risk the budget savings you proposed when tabling the introduction of new parking charges? And what discussions did your committee undertake with the Directive of Neighbourhoods and the Directive of Resources to mitigate this risk? Thank you, Councillor Cox. Uh, yes, I was aware that it could take a long time and up to nine months, but not necessarily nine months. It was discussed with the officers, and the officers assured me that that was all part of the initial proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question um, is to Councillor Liz Gray, as well Chair of Environment, Climate, Emergencies and Transport Committee, and it refers to um, Minute 34 on the Policy and Resources Committee of the 28th of July, where it lays, lays out the responsibilities and remit for our um, committees. Can I ask her then, um, with that in mind, about unauthorised encampments and how many unauthorised encampments has the Council dealt with so far this calendar year? And what has been the total cost in relation to the clean-up and removal of these encampments? And on the actual removal, I'm sure she's aware of a number of comments that have been made by members of the public on Facebook, um, but for one particular um, comment which really worried me was the fact that somebody had alluded to the, um, when the um, encampment rolled up onto the field at the back of Sainsbury's in Prenton. When the council were removing them, there was demands made that the council should make for fuel costs of all their vehicles, and this actually was agreed. I'm not sure if she's aware of that, but uh, could she find out, please, and could she let me know, because that clearly is not a good use of council taxpayers' money. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. I can't tell you the details of the precise figures that you've asked for, but obviously we'll get back to you on those. And what you've just referred to on Facebook, I've not seen that. I don't know anything about it. Um, I share your concern about that, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, question for Councillor Jeanette Williamson, Chair of Policy and Resources. Uh, referring to minute 34 of the meeting on the 28th of July. Um, recently, 10 local authorities were awarded a share of £7.9 million from the government's data accelerator fund. Uh, the fund is designed to ensure vulnerable people across the country receive earlier and better support from local services through improved data sharing between local partners. 
Given the well-known disparities across our borough, which have been mentioned tonight, did Wirral apply for this fund? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. I don't have the answer to hand, but I'll make sure that I send you it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is for Yvonne Nolan, Chair of the Adult Social Care and Health Committee. And it's in reference to the meeting on the 7th of June, 2021, and Minute 5. My question is this. What steps have the Adult Social Care and Health Committee taken to consult user groups in relation to any proposed future governance arrangement for rural evolutions? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Camphor, for your question. <clears throat> we have consulted. Our officers have been working very, very closely um, with both user groups, staff groups, um, and parents and carers. Um, we are to hear from parents and carers at um, a meeting that we have next week. And we have had considerable correspondence with all those groups. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a question for Jeanette Williamson, Chair of Policy and Resources Committee, uh, for the PNR Committee, 9th of June 2021, Minute 15, which refers to refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, we, are, we are truly sorry, Jeanette, to hear of the abuse you received in relation to the announcements that Wirral will be welcoming Afghan refugees as a part of the Government's warm welcome operation. Do you have any plans to consult other groups and set up a cross-party committee to ensure that Wirral welcomes these people who have been through so much? If you could give us some detail, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hodson. Uh, thank you for your sympathy, but I'm used to it by now. Um, of course, it should be a cross-party approach to welcoming refugees. Mine was an initial statement as leader, as many other leaders did do at the time. It was initial. It was a statement of welcome for when the time comes. Now, we have moved on considerably since then, and uh, I think part of the next process should be cross-party uh, communications and involvement in that. That looks as if it's all done. Yeah. No further questions. Then uh, can we move on to uh, B, which is joint arrangements and external organisations. No reports or questions have been received in advance from the meeting. So we move straight on now to notices of motion. Uh, councillors, we now have... Uh, we now move to item 7 on the agenda and the Council is invited to consider the following motions which have been submitted in accordance with Standing Order 13. Please note, members, I will call these motions forward in order of party size. Motion 1, proposals to reform the planning system. I now invite councillors Steve Fawkes and Brian Kenny to move and second their motion. Mr Mayor, can I ask some advice? Would it not be sensible for the amendment as well to be moved and then we can have one debate or do you want me to start it now? I do make reference in the speech to the amendment, you see. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, no... no. Well, you, all I'm asking you to do at the present moment, Steve, is say that you are... The yeah, formally moved. moved. And... Next one is Brian, Brian Kenny. Yeah, formally seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so now, um, the amendments. So we've got an amendment. I am aware one amendment in respect of this motion and refer councillors to the supplementary agenda pack. And it's been moved by Councillor Stuart Kelly and Alan Brown. So... Stuart and Alan. Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. 
I call on Councillor Kelly to move the amendment. Fauci's going for Mr. Rice, sorry. Councillor Fawkes, you have now have five minutes to speak on your motion. OK, uh, I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. Uh, Mr Mayor, we have at a previous council discussed and fairly roundly condemned many aspects of the Conservative government's new planning bill. And whilst it's progressing through Parliament, it is vital that we continue to raise the profile and pressure for changes or even the withdrawal of this bill. Many have considered it to be flawed uh, and have described it as a developer's charter. Firstly, the planning system is complex and is tilted towards development. The first line of planning law says we will presume approval unless demonstrable harm can be proved. So there's, there's a, an emphasis in the world to allow development to take place. And also, uh, as part of the planning system, members will recognise that only the applicant has a right of appeal, a second bite of the cherry, whereas objectors do not have uh, that right at all, only if they can prove procedural issues and they can go to the Ombudsman. So, so it is heavily tilted. And those members of the planning committee know the rules and, and, and the regulations make it very difficult. However, there is democratic input and all decisions are made when it comes to committee by elected members and officers carry out that decision. So I would say any, any change in the law that tilts the balance further in a developer's way should be treated with discretion, should be treated with suspicion, and should be treated with extreme caution. The motion refers to the controversial zoning options where the right of objectors in certain cases is removed from individual applications if it meets so-called criteria. The country will be divided into zones, so therefore Whittle will be divided into zones. Three zones exist, growth areas, suitable for sustainable development, presumption in favour, and no need to go to planning committee. Renewal areas, suitable for development, but a presumption will be in favour. And the final category, protected areas, require full planning permission, which includes green belt, uh, areas of outstanding beauty, and conservation areas. All the zones that have been described have various critics. The one that will be most difficult to deal with is the, um, the growth zone, as I mentioned. So we'll be in a position where we set principles for areas, for how big are the areas, what, what would those criteria be. But once the criteria are set, that is the only time if the legislation goes through where individuals can object. So you can only object to the criteria at that stage. And in individual applications, the right to go to committee will be removed. We will not deal with planning applications as we do in the same way. So, Whittle is the very diverse, probably one of the most diverse boroughs in, in the world. But even within your own wards, and I ask you all to think about the character of your own ward, you can walk from one street to the next and the character changes dramatically. For example, in my ward, I can walk through the leafy suburbs where millionaires live, and within 50 yards, I'm on a former council estate. How on earth will we be able to set criteria on, on such a diverse area? The system isn't wrong at the moment. It does give people a chance to object. So if you look at your own area and then think about that, so how can we cover such areas? We in the Labour Group oppose such a move and will resist it. An individual home and their, their street scene are precious to them, and we know the interest and the, we demand their right to object. So why change? Supposedly, it's to increase housing numbers. They blame the planning system, but nationally, nine out of 10 permissions are granted. So it's not the planning committee that's holding them up, or planning systems. Cost, they say. Currently, the taxpayer subsidises the cost of planning applications nationally to the tune of £180 million. So we're actually paying out of public payers to help development. What type of homes will be built? Well, social housing gets very little notice within the planning implication. 
We've heard the plea for affordable housing, but we want social housing enshrined in planning resolutions so that we can use the planning system to develop social housing. We know from the housing numbers imposed on us, when central government gets involved making local decisions, it gets it wrong. They have imposed on us excessive housing figures, and I have no doubt that the zoning system will be used to abuse and to help developers. We fear setting up the zoning exercise will also cost a lot of money. It will also come directly after we've just got through our local plan. So we've done the local plan, and then we're going to have to have this mass zoning issue. It's not necessary. The local plan will guide us in planning decisions and give the right for single applications to come forward. We agree with the in the Labour group there are many uh, critics calling it a developer's charter. Labour proposed a bill in Parliament where, to try and encourage those developers sitting on already permissions to use it. Use it or lose it was the phrase. And to prevent land banking, which again stops development. Can current, you close up now, please, Steve? Okay. Thank current you. permissions stand at over one million homes. Uh, one million homes suddenly have permission. If they were released at a faster rate, the housing crisis could be averted. I will close up and I will use my right of reply. Um, we believe this is motivated by developers. And just to put some suspicion behind why the, the development of the policy, jo Johnson's government received 11 million in B Boris Johnson's Steve, tenure on, in, donations, in, in, sorry, in donations from property uh, development companies. I'll finish there, Mr. Mayor, and use the right of reply. I am aware of one amendment in respect of this motion and refer councillors to the supplementary agenda pack moved by councillors Stuart Kelly and Alan Brown. I call on councillor Kelly to move the amendment. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll start off by saying how much I agree with um, the uh, comments that councillor Fouts has just made uh, when he outlines the issues that are likely to become prevalent when the planning bill, the detail of the planning bill become um, uh, clear to us. And I suspect that many in the Conservative Party will also agree with what he said. Certainly the, the so-called blue wall uh, is already starting to crumble, we've seen, and I suspect many Conservative MPs will rebel uh, at, uh, at these changes. But Mr Mayor, turning to my amendment, when I read a sentence that says the planning system works best when developers and the local community work together, I have to ask myself whether we are practicing what we preach. If we do think it best if developers and the community work together, what do we do to help facilitate that? The best time for working together is, of course, at the pre-application stage. We have a mechanism for developers to speak with officers so they can lay out the policy parameters that would apply to a given site. Why don't we offer developers the opportunity, facilitated by the Council, to meet with ward members, committee lead members and representatives of, for example, amenity and conservation groups? We have a subcommittee. It meets with developers at pre-application stage, but only for major strategic applications, which means over 200 houses or 10,000 square metres of non-residential floor space. We can be creative here, Informal ad hoc meetings involving developers, members and the community could be an offer we could make. Of course, we can't legally require developers to engage, but the National Planning Policy Framework is clear when it says applicants should work closely with those affected by their proposals and applications that could demonstrate early, proactive and efficient engagement with the community should be looked on more favourably than those that cannot. It's often in the developer's best interest to understand any issues the community may have before they go to the expense of drawing up detailed plans. Mr Mayor, two, two additional ideas I highlight in this amendment. The labelling of plans on the website, it's a bugbear for me. Who amongst us hasn't been on the website to look at an application in their own ward only to find all the documents, tabs, up-team files with indecipherable numeric descriptions? 
Sometimes you just want to look at one plan or one elevation and have to trawl through every document to find what you're after. There's no reason why they can't be accurately described when they're uploaded. Mr. Mayor, members may also be interested in how many objections there are uh, to a given application. Click on that link and we can see the number. We can even see the, the address of the obje objector or the supporter, but we can't see what they're saying. If, if members visit the Chester and Cheshire West planning website, it's the same platform and it allows for all comments to be viewed. Wouldn't that be useful not only for members, but also for developers? Mr. Mayor, yes, we need to defend democratic decision making, but we also need to look to improve the system we currently have. And I hope Council will support the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Brown. The second. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll formally second at this stage, uh, Mr. Mayor. Amendments only and vote before we return to the original motion as amended or otherwise. Thank you. Tom. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to, well, the amendment's been um, accepted. I thought it was going to be one debate. Um, so I just want to make a few brief comments on what Councillor Falk says. You know, the irony to come out of his mouth about a developer's charter when it was this council that signed into development agreement to loan £26 million out to a shell company. Not, not, um, not my words, actually we're all Labour group words that had little or no assets. And, you know, the other... <laughs> The irony of saying, we want more affordable homes. Well, why not practice what you preach, Steve? And why not ask your chair of housing, instead of cancelling the housing committee because it's not go, no, got no business, to actually discuss the 5.2 million that this government has given to the, the, uh, the country and what we can use to help develop affordable homes for our more deprived. Um, this is just a tokenistic motion that completely misrepresents the Conservative government's policies. Council actually unanimously passed in October a resolution to take into consultation all planning reforms. Um, and all you're doing is regurgitating what your MPs have put in Parliament. Have you got nothing else to add to this debate except to regurgitate what your MPs just, just, just say, Steve? You know, it is absolutely... Out, you know, the... The amendment, actually, I'm quite supportive of, Mr. Mayor, um, but, you know, please let's not be tokenistic. This is a consultation, and, you know, if you actually bothered to come up with a local plan in the last 15 years, you might not have, you might have like, a, a point to make, but, you know, there it is, so, and I don't know what you're wishing on about, Stuart, but, you know, no one can hear you, so no one cares. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, can I ask that, Mr. Mayor, can I ask that we keep the tone of this debate more civilised than this? We've just voted on a code of conduct, and some of the personalised insults that have come out of your mouth tonight, Councillor Anderson, you should be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed at all, Mr. Mayor. I was being heckled, actually. So there you go. I was respecting the debate. Please, thank you. Sorry. Um, do you want to ask him a question? Just, just, just. Sorry, through you, Councillor Fouts, could we just check you're accepting the amendment? Uh, I haven't had a chance to, to write a reply. We will not be accepting the amendments right. because we do not Fair believe enough. it to be a friendly amendment and there are cost implications. Uh, and I will explain that in my right of reply if that's okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. It's just that it was raised, so just checking. So, so, Mayor, this is a debate on the amendment. Debate on the amendments. Absolutely. Right, any more speakers, please? Cathy? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as a member of both the Planning Committee and the Planning St Strategic Subcommittee, I would suggest that the contents of the Liberal Democrat Amendment are somewhat aligned to the direction of travel of the proposed Conservative planning system reforms. 
The reforms of the planning system are designed to ensure more engagement and local democracy, not less, and to ensure that the plan-making process is faster and better, with plans produced in 30 months, not seven years, and that many more citizens are involved in this process than they are today. Couple this with digitalisation, and we are the party bringing the people into planning rather than leaving them out. Bewildered by the opaque rules and technical language of the current system. By making the plan-making system focus on the big issues that really matter, what to build were and what mustn't be built on at all, and making the processes and assessments easy to understand and engage with, the Conservatives are giving local people a hugely improved and much greater opportunity to shape the future of their communities. Let us not forget that this government back in 2010 inherited levels of house building at the lowest level they had been since the 1920s. We remember when the Labour Secretary of State, John Prescott, was at MHCLG and his flagrant disregard for the Green Belt, the needs of local communities and local democracy, with his failed approach to regional planning, which was scrapped when we came to power. To summarise, it is the Conservative Party that will enable more meaningful public engagement in the current planning system and create a simpler, faster and more modern planning system, ensuring homes and infrastructure can be delivered by providing more certainty for communities and developers and digitalising a system to make it more visual and easier for local people to meaningfully engage in. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Okay. Jerry. Right, okay. Um, for many, for many, many years, I have highlighted uh, in these committees the inequality, the iniquities, I should say, of central government planning law, the inadequacies of the planning inspectors in Bristol, developers employing barristers to get the results they so desire. Housing developers, in many cases, are only interested in high-end housing, whilst affordable social housing is desperately needed. We have seen Greenbelt invasion allowed, in the words of many of my constituents, as cop-out clauses like heritage exemptions in the case of Storton Hall allow the building of 30-odd, 300 to 400,000 uh, houses or flats uh, in, an ancient, uh, in, a, in an ancient hamlet to, that, to facilitate getting a building at risk of historic heritage England's uh, uh, at Rissler, sorry, my, my apologies. The wishes and aspirations of every heritage group on Wirral, uh, putting an ancient monument in a housing estate with no interpretation whatsoever. The Conservatives have re recently lost a by-election due to a broken planning system. And I, I remember as heritage champion a few years ago, asked to uh, go to planning committee in relation to a development in Eastham, uh, in the Eastham conservation area and the Greenbelt, which was so to build 20 houses in the Eastham conservation area, uh, a car park for about 140, 120 fit vehicles plus coaches and bringing in masses of traffic movements uh, into uh, little to, to Eastham uh, Eastern Village. That night, Councillor Pat Cleary from the Green Party supported that. Now, what the heck is going on here? What is going on in, in this whole planning infrastructure? But I can tell you now, of 23 years on, my, on the council now, the planning system is my greatest ever frustration. And can, and I, can I thank that night, by the way, on the Heritage, on the planning committee, for a certain member from Wirral, from Wirral South voted against that proposal for uh, 20 houses, detached houses in the Eastern Conservation Area and Greenbelt, a, a car park for 120 vehicles and coaches, and got 40 or 50 traffic extra car move and vehicle movements going into Little Eastern Village. But 
These are the main issues that we need to consider and we've never got to grips with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just before you speak, Dave, can I just remind you, we are talking about um, the amendments. So I, I should have stopped Jerry and said something to him as well. I'm sorry. We are That's yeah. exactly what I'm going to do, Mr Mayor. I'm, I'm in full support of the Liberal Democrat amendment to this because it does give the opportunity for communities to have a voice. And I just listened to what Jerry said about my particular ward and an incident... Uh, well, an application that took place for a few houses to be built in the Greenbelt. What he forgot to tell people was that then allowed for a new youth and community centre to be built. The land that the old youth and community centre was on is now being developed as social housing, and the development's also paid for traffic calming system throughout the historic village. Now, he forgets all that. It's very easy to put contextuous and interesting things into a a speech to make it sound good. I'm fully supportive of the, uh, of the amendment by the Liberal Democrat group because it actually hits the nail on the head in relation to what is required. That has given the local communities the ability to address any major developments that are taking place in their community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Councillor Ian Lewis, please. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, while I accept the points put, put, put forward by Councillor Fawkes, and this is clearly a, a nationally driven debate because it's going through Parliament, so our, our ability to affect anything on that debate is pretty minimal. As we know, regardless of who's in government, our voice isn't particularly loud as 66 councillors. But I think it would be remiss in this debate for anybody, any of the public, who have not given up the will to live and are still watching the debate tonight. I think they would get the wrong impression of the planning service. I think in Wirral, I think we've seen some really good improvements over the last year, 18 months, two years, partly driven by the new chair of the committee, and I'd like to pay tribute to the work by Councillor Stuart Kelly. Certainly some of the changes that he's brought in since he took on that role have been noticed and appreciated by residents. Uh, a recent campaign that my colleague Leslie Rennie ran in, uh, in, uh, in Wallasey Ward, certainly that wouldn't have been as successful had we not had the support of the Chair of Planning and the reforms he's made to the committee, and also to thank the uh, planning officers. We had a fairly damning report, I think, as Councillor Fikes may recall, unless he's got a blind spot to that one, but we did have a fairly damning report into the planning service in Wirral, uh, conducted by our peers from other local metropolitan authorities, and I think it's fair to say that there have been some very impressive changes within that department. Not all done yet. So clearly, we're not out, out of the woods yet. But clearly, if we are going to work with developers to build the houses that I know Councillor McManus and myself and other members of the Housing, housing Committee want to see built to meet the 10,000 people that are on the waiting list, I think the planning service is getting there. In the words of British Rail, we're not quite there yet, but we are getting there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, but before I make my contribution, I, I'm just interested in what the secret messages are between the members of the Conservative group and the Deputy Mayor. Uh, there seems to be secret messages passing uh, between certain members. So I, th I think, you know, I think everyone should deserve uh, an explanation of what, what that's all about. Uh, my contribution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This government has let in communities down over the protection of the Greenbelt land. Research by the Campaign to Protect Rural England finds that the amount of farmland, forests, gardens and greenfield land lost to housing development has increased by 58% over the last four years. The policy of Brownfield First is something which I have long supported and is a top priority of the Labour Group in preparing for our local plan. I believe local authorities should be supported with the tools they need to protect high quality green spaces and greenbelts. The government must do more to ensure that residents and businesses feel control of developments in their areas. Too often, people feel left, feel left, are left feeling that the planning is done for them rather than the process in which they can participate. However, the proposals we are seeing from governments are the complete opposite. Government proposals are simply a developer's charter 
And when we have a minister actively admit that he intervened to say a Conservative donor £45 million in community infrastructure levies by approving, a house, approving a housing developments the day before the new levies come into force, together with the constant stream of lies and truth twisting coming from ministers, is any surprise that governments are simply not trusted. Last year, Shelter estimated that more than 320,000 homes have been given planning permission in the last five years and a civil have been built. That alone represents much more than a year's worth of the supply of new homes that we need. I believe the government should take a decisive action and introduce radical new powers to end land banking and give councils the ability to set tough new rules to ensure the homes are built and that that's already been approved. Not only the proposals by the government in the front to local democracy and amounts of developers' charter, they also represent a real risk to our green belt. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Sorry, there have been no um, further speakers. Councillor Brown, you now have three minutes to speak to the amendments. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I've been listening carefully to the comments that other members have made, and um, most of them don't seem to reflect the, uh, the, the motion of the amendment that uh, Councillor Kelly has, uh, has put before us. Um, I did appreciate the remarks by uh, Councillor Lewis, uh, recognising the, the improvements that uh, the, the current chair of the planning committee has made. And uh, what we have before us are some further practical suggestions which uh, Councillor Kelly is making based on his years of experience on the planning committee about how we can make the system more responsive to, to local people. And of course, uh, None of these things will be able to happen if the new government bill is passed uh, because um, th there may be some broad brush uh, discussion prior to uh, uh, plans being made, but when it comes down to the detail, people will be excluded. And uh, what we're seeing increasingly uh, in this country is that, that, that people's democratic rights, their ability to participate, their ability to influence local decisions, their ability to feel that they have a voice in their local community is being taken away. Um, so I would hope that people, uh, members can focus on the, the practical <laughs> suggestions that Councillor Kelly is making, and I, I'm disappointed that Councillor Fawkes uh, could not accept these, uh, because we, we agree entirely with the, the thrust of what he was saying, uh, but these are um, specific ideas about how we can involve people in that decision-making process and influence it be, before we get into the, uh, the detail of planning uh, committee. Um, so um, I, I would ask members uh, to support the amendment. Right to reply. Proposer of the original motion, Councillor Fawkes, you now have the, your right to reply. Uh, uh, point address. of order, Mr. Uh, Mr Mayor. My understanding of uh, rule number nine is that debate should be concluded by the second of the motion and then the right of reply. If I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you have now reached the three hour point, or at least you will in one minute, uh, at which point uh, the debate continues as though the question now be put. Uh, the debate at the moment is on the uh, amendment, so there is the right of reply uh, for uh, Councillor Fawkes, uh, then immediately to the vote on the amendment, and then, as you say, from there on in, it is straight to uh, seconder and right of reply on the main motion, and then the rest of the motions are straight to the vote with no comment. Jeff, just stop it. All right. I'll take a minute now, Vicky. Right. Councillor Fawkes. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. And two, I would like to comment on the style that's adopted by Tom Anderson. He names individuals specifically to rile them, 
He makes personal insults. Uh, I don't think it's the right way for, to debate something so seriously. In, in, and you don't have to take my words for it. Boris Johnson has said these rules, these new planning regulations are misunderstood. Well, let's know what um, Theresa May said in Parliament. She says it would reduce democracy and lead to the wrong homes in the wrong places. Not my words, not Labour MPs' words, Theresa May's words. Finally, I do get time to... Uh, uh, Councillor Kelly, uh, I, I do have a great deal of sympathy with the, the uh, motion, but yet again, and there is a bit of a cosy relationship between uh, the Lib Dems and the Conservatives, both nationally we've seen in the past and very much locally, and particularly on planning. They do cosy up very well, so uh, it's a bit sycophantic, some of the remarks. However, if you look at the Mr. first... Mr. Mayor, if Mr. You look at Mr. The... Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, can I exercise a right of personal reply to that slight? There's no slight, Stuart. It's true. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, may I just say Councillor Fox accused me of being personal <laughs> and naming people, Mr. and what Mayor, he's just done exactly that. Mr. Mayor, I am the chair of the planning committee. And I'm the, the vice chair. The planning committee is a quasi-judicial function of this council. Yeah. It, is, it is an outrageous slur to suggest that I, as chair of that committee, or any other member of that committee, cozies up and makes deals in advance. And I would insist, Mr. Mayor, that you ask that councillor to withdraw that <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Steve, in sit down, Steve. Of, in terms Quiet, of, in terms sit of down. how the Stuart. amendment came about, I read in his amendment that he believed the planning system worked better when developers and the community worked together. So I put Mr. practical Mr. examples Mr. on Please. the table. And it goes back to that. Shameful. <laughs> Withdraw. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Withdraw. Mr. Mayor, if he gives me a chance, I will, de I will explain why I have made such comments in the, t in the terms of the debate. I have the utmost respect for Councillor Kelly, and if I've offended him anyway, I'll withdraw what he believes is a, 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 a slight. It is not, because when I come to explain his amendment, it will be quite clear. What he has sought to do in the first part is quote from the legislation. And my argument is that that gives an out for the Tories to promote this policy as being something that is correct. That is what I meant in terms of allowing the Tories off the hook. The Tories are rebelling in Parliament against this legislation, and we are allowing them to get away, to get, to get away with it because the words of the legislation say applicants should. Why don't we move together an amendment together and say applicants must and they must come to committee if there's a proper plan and application and in this legislation that right of plan and application going to committee will be removed from ordinary citizens so by quoting the legislation and think that's okay we should encourage it it must be a right of the public to complain against an application in their area my house my street is precious to me it might not be precious to the the Conservatives and the Lib Dems, but it's precious to me and the people I represent. So don't try and wriggle off the hook and say it's okay, they should. What if they don't? What if they just build? And that's what they would be allowed to do if we don't intervene. I also have great concern, and I do try to believe in the committee system, and we do work well together on the planning committee at the moment. But what is being sought here, and we had a debate about it before, is to use the council, full council, and a notice of motion to actually make detailed policy and committee decisions. Well, I'd like to get round the table because there will be huge resource implications if this was adopted tomorrow, so we'd need to discuss that. The other thing I believe um, is that we have a crisis. I don't know whether you know, but we have regular reports. We have a difficulty in the planning department at the moment in terms of staff and resources. Staff and resources provided by a Labour cabinet 
through both George Davis, when he was in charge as a cabinet member, and through Stuart Whittingham further on. We provided the resources for the improvements that you've seen. You can improve services if you have enough people and resources. And Stuart and I and Kath worked together to improve the system. We all agreed to set up the subcommittee for strategic applications. But the thought, the thought of us having to pay and do the work for developers when they should be paying is a cost to the Council. And that's why I will not agree to, agree to the amendments of being friendly, because it lets the Tories off the hook. LGA oppose it. The Tories oppose it. We should be opposing it. The LGA oppose it. Show some backbone and stand up to them. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, guillotine's been and gone, hasn't it? Mr. Mayor, just a point of order. Um, I have to say that we, we still haven't resolved that an accusation was made against the chair of a very, very important committee that there was something Mr. Mayor, untoward, the comment was withdrawn. and there was no apology forthcoming that I recall. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, but it'll be it'll be on the video. Okay. I made it I quite clear. I think you must have been asleep. It, there was an apology. <laughs> hey, and lessons from you, my God. I was asleep because of all the filibustering. I think. Mr. Mayor, can we move progress, please? For the amendment 34, against the amendment 26, abstentions nil. Thank you. That's carried. The main substantive motion as amended. All those four. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Oh. My understanding is understanding order number yes. nine is that the seconder of the motion shall speak before the vote. That is correct. Right? It is correct, is it? Brian, that you're right. You should get the votes. You should have a chance. Yeah. So. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, the Tory government planning reforms are a clear example of their impulse to deprive communities of power rather than, as they always suggest, empower them. Now, I know Councillor Lewis said we can't have much influence here, but I would suggest that if all Whittle councillors work together, we can help protect the right of residents to have a say over their own streets and their own local green spaces because at the end of the day, all residents expect is a voice, not a veto. And we need to, I think, collectively voice our opposition to the government plans and create a united front able to defeat 
the developer's charter, and I make no apologies for, again, using that phrase. Communities should have a say over developments in their area. Also, Mr Mayor, the length of time for which planning permission is granted should be reduced to stop developers land banking instead of actually building. Under the Conservatives' proposals, planning decisions will be taken away from democratically elected local councils and handed to development boards appointed by ministers in Whitehall. These new quangos will help zone areas for development. Residents living in areas zoned for growth will find that they no longer have an automatic right to object to individual planning applications on their own doorsteps, no right to object to oversized blocks at the end of their street, no right to object to concrete and over precious green space, and no right to object to new developments that overburden local infrastructure such as roads, doctors' surgeries, schools or public transport. Mr Mayor, there's no doubt that we need to build more housing, particularly good quality homes that people can afford to rent or buy. But the problem isn't the planning system. If there's a problem to be fixed, it's incentivising developers to go ahead and develop rather than sitting on rising land values with a view to selling it on for a profit in the future. LGA research published last year showed that more than one million homes granted planning permission in the preceding decade had not been built, and that is totally unacceptable. The proposed system, outlined in a white paper published by the government last year, would see different areas designated within local plans into three distinct zones for planning purposes, and Councillor Fawkes uh, spoke in detail to these areas earlier, and they are protected, renewal or growth. So Whittle Council should now call on the government to protect the right of communities to object to individual planning applications. Tory MPs, when this came before Parliament, were instructed to abstain. How can anybody abstain on such a crucial issue as this? So it's on that basis, Mr Mayor, I call on this Council now to give full support to this motion as amended. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Fawkes, do you wish to exercise your right of reply as a proposer of the original motion? Only to reiterate, Chair, my... Uh, if it was taken the wrong way, my, my uh, talking about council, I don't like using names because I've been getting in trouble for that. If, if, if somehow I insulted the chair of planning committee, it was not in any uh, in a way a, a, about his integrity. It was about the wording of his motion, which allowed the government off the hook because the legislation is bad. Bad law is bad law whether you're Tory, Labour, Conservative, whatever you want to be, or, or Lib Dem, or Green. This is a bad law going through Parliament, and the Tory government are shaking on it. And any dilution of this resolution, and we will be back with resolutions, believe you me, we will not passively stand by as a party and see our citizens trampled on by central governments. What next? Oh, if the South East kick off again, oh, tell you what, Reduce our housing numbers and shift the housing numbers up north. That'll get us off the hook, won't it? Or shift into Labour. That's what this legislation will enable us to do. It's the, the heavy hand of central government directing what should be a local planning system. And any dilution of that is why we refuse the amendments. Of course, we're going to vote for the amended, and we'll work every, every single hour of the day to help our citizens through the planning system. That's the job you do as an elected member. But yet again, I will... Make it, make it quite clear personally to Stuart, I was not making any, any attack on his integrity, but the political stance that was taken, which I believe has let the Tories off the hook tonight, and I'm very surprised other parties have joined in with them. This is a big issue, and it ain't going to go away. All those in favour, please. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay, so it is now past the time for the guillotine. The guillotine was set at four.
9.15, because we had a 15-minute break in the middle. So that's why it was 9.15. So we now just go straight to um, Councillor Anderson. Song. Let me just look at this. Um, motion 3, inquiry into the Nicholas Joint Venture Group um, Development Agreement. Just, they're, they're done in order of size. Okay. Um, so can I ask, um, I'm looking for the, where's it? This is crazy. Thank you. Um, amendment will be first, which has been moved by Councillor Jeanette Williamson and Paul Stewart. Um, all those in favour, please show. Look. Thank you. So moved, Mr Mayor. Seconded, Mr Mayor. Thank you. You're now voting. Only voting now. There's no debate. No, nothing. Straight to the votes. Mr. Mayor, a point of order. I've just, just read it out to you. No, I, I don't understand, Mr. Mayor, that how can you have something amended that hasn't been moved? I, I, I haven't moved my motion, Mr. Mayor. Can you bring some updates on that, please? Certainly, members. Once uh, you're into the guillotine, uh, then uh, motions and amendments are deemed to have been uh, formally uh, moved and seconded. Um, if members wish, you can go through the process of uh, formally moving and seconding and then moving to the vote. That may make it run uh, a little more smoothly. Mr. Mayor, that's the first time I've ever heard that rule. In all the past council meetings, when we got to this position, as uh, Councillor Williamson looked a bit beleaguered as well, we, we come to the notice of motion. It is moved by the person's point of view. It's then seconded, and then it goes to the vote. And that's the system we've always used in the past. Yeah, quite, quite so, Mr. Mayor. So, um, pause of the motion is Councillor Anderson. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Seconder. Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Cathy. Um, and I call uh, uh, the amendment, I call upon Councillor Jeanette Williamson. So moved, Mr. Mayor. And Councillor so Stewart. So moved, Mr. Mayor. So we take the amendment first. All those in favour, please show. That's 100%. Yeah. Um, so that now goes forward with the original, isn't it? Right. Substantive motion um, with included in, in that as well, with the amendments. So all those in favour, please show. Again, thank you. And then motion schools funding. And now invite councillors Karubia and Gilchrist to move and second their motion. So, so moved, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Second it, Mr. Mayor. Um, so it's straight to the vote. There's no Adams, no. Okay. Right, straight to the vote, please. All those in favour.
And for the, for the vote is 39, against 21, no abstentions. That's carried. And the last one is um, low traffic neighbourhoods. And the proposal of the motion is Councillor Cook and clearly to move and second their motion. Second, Mr. Mayor. Straight to the vote. All those in favour? And all the members. Sorry, 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 sorry. Councillors Brame and Stuart Kelly. Uh, Councillor Brame? So, so, so move, Mr. Mayor. And, and Stuart. So we move the amendment first. All those in favour, please show. That is for the amendments is 39, against the amendment 21, no abstentions. That's carried. And I'll say, put that together and now vote on the original. Where am I? Uh, Council Cook, Council Cleary. So all those in favour with the amendment, please show. And those against, please. Thank you very much indeed. And that is the same figures, 439 against 21, no abstentions. And that, councillors, concludes this evening's meeting. Thank God. Thank you.